Off my Three own. seconds. Hello, everyone. Welcome to It's a Long Story, uh, a place where we roll dice, we tell stories, and we create magic. Uh, we are here um, in uh, slightly new digs with uh, most that we're still, uh, Mike, I think, is just kind of trying to rejoin us now. Um, 
in, uh, we are here with the Mongoose crew. Everybody take a look at your camera, wave, and say hi. 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 Uh, awesome. Uh, for those that are, that are unfamiliar with who we are, hi, we are a D&D live play stream that runs every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, having four parties uh, existing, living, breathing, eating, uh, conversing, arguing uh, in the same uh, in the same beautiful homebrew world of Imea. Uh So uh, we uh, we hope you enjoy what you see, and if not, you know, I assume there's other stuff on the internet, but hopefully you, you stick around. Um, before we jump into tonight, we just have a couple of announcements to get through. Uh, uh, one of which I keep forgetting to actually mention in the Discord, so I apologize, gang. Uh, but we have um, uh, Start Playing, uh, which is the uh, the company that I work for that actually you know houses us being able to kind of like play these games and collect, connect with other people and doing uh, in uh, in in connecting with most of the people in the campaigns that you've already seen here. Uh, uh, have teamed up with D&D Beyond to celebrate D&D uh, uh, officially turning 50 this year. Super cool. Super exciting. Uh, so the way to be able to, uh, yeah, the way to be able to celebrate that, um, as always, would be a one shot, right? Uh, so Start Playing has allowed uh, me to be able to DM uh, one of their, uh, uh, one of D&D uh, Beyond's newer one shots. Uh, they're putting out that is actually a revamp of a very old uh, campaign, uh, which is, uh, uh, I'll make sure I pull it up here so I don't forget or say the wrong name, because that would be bad. Um, that is for the uh, Descent into the Lost Caverns of Sojkath. We were talking about this on Tuesday. Not entirely sure of the pronunciation, but pretty sure it's Saj Camp. I think as a DM, I'll probably have to know by the time we do the one shot. Uh, uh, feel free to make your own iteration of it. T S O J C A N T H. Full like Middle Earth style lettering. So Saj Camp makes sense to me. Um, yeah, it is a, a revamp of a very old uh, dungeon crawl that were uh, that was uh, made. Um, in the earlier sort of uh, designs of uh, D and D, so they're revamping it uh, to celebrate. So we're running a uh, we're running two one shots, uh, two separate one shots uh, in uh, the month of April, the upcoming month of April. Um, it will be uh, a level nine one shot, uh, very dungeon crawl feeling. I'm just looking at the material that I got literally today uh, for that. Um, and that will be on the uh, the 13th and the 20th of April, so both Saturdays. Um, so if you're interested, um, it's also relatively cheaper than some of the other one shots that we do. It's only going to be 15 bucks a player. Um, so if you are interested in uh, in jumping in and joining uh, uh, the uh, the heavy, heavy combat inspired dungeon crawl of the Lost Caverns of Such Camp, uh, Dimension is level nine. Everybody will be level nine. It's going to be pretty pretty heavy pretty crazy uh yeah 50th anniversary super cool uh so thank you start playing and thank you dnd &D beyond for allowing us to be able to kind of join into that uh so if you're interested in checking that out as well as uh the next thing i will be talking about um you can do so uh at startplaying.com slash sorry startplaying.games slash gm slash it's a long story um, you can see all of our upcoming uh, one shots that we have that we typically run every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, however, also in the month of April, uh, we are not necessarily doing one shots as much as we are starting our uh, next drop in, drop out campaign. So every Saturday and Sunday, uh, we'll say most Saturdays and Sundays of, of April, May, and most likely going a little bit into June as well, uh, we will be uh, introducing our Humblewood campaign. Uh, so for those who, uh, have no idea, Humblewood, you get to play an anthropomorphic, uh, woodland creature of either the land or the sky. Um, our version we're calling, a uh, Humblewood Silk and Sunder. So, um, definitely more on the wackier side. We're trying to figure out how to be able to kind of describe it, uh, for, for new players, but it'll be, uh, it's going to be dark in, at some, at certain points, but not serious. So dark and whimsical at the same time. Uh, uh, I think like, I don't know, I think like maybe like Gravity Falls, I guess, ish, maybe. 
trying to think of other like sort of things like I think this may be a little cartoony um it's gonna be super fun though so uh, uh if you're interested in checking that out the first uh, uh you can do so with the link that i just put up there uh the first uh session we are going to have on that will be uh saturday uh, uh april 6th so saturday and sunday april 6th and april 7th um and then uh we are taking the following two saturdays off for the uh descent into uh so uh so yeah so that is what is uh on the uh uh up and in uh that is what is taking place in the future um also uh, uh last week we had our um we had a, a very fun candela obscura one shot uh that we ran uh that was uh it was nice to be able to kind of have that revamping into the world that we've that i truly have spent so much time trying to kind of build up and, and make in preparation for a campaign that we are very much still trying to get off the ground, uh, still looking for players. Uh, so for those who are unfamiliar, Candela Obscura is uh, not d and uh, It is uh, designed by the uh, people from Critical Role to be an introspective uh, cosmic horror game uh, designed to be incredibly rules light, allowing for a huge amount of, kind of creativity um, with, uh, with high stakes and uh, very simplistic uh, well, sorry, not simplistic, very short campaigns. Um, uh, because there's a good chance your player dies or falls into the uh, the bleed. Uh, but uh, last Saturday we had an awesome uh, one shot for that, uh, which did include uh, one of our uh, one of our friends way down there in the corner. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a blast. It was nice to be able to, like I said, to be able to rejoin that. Uh, so if you're interested in possibly finding out more information on the full campaign, we are currently looking at uh, Thursdays or Sundays. Uh, so if either of those are interesting or are, are of interest for you and you're open those dates, um, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me um, with through that link. Um, uh, if you're willing to support the channel, uh, best way to do so is to like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. The more people we get involved in uh, the viewership of this, the more that this uh, this this whole game says, I don't know what. Wow, that was I have no idea what Jamie was doing. Hopefully, I, I, I hope I you all like that. Friendly that face was, so that that was terrifying. What do you mean? That was very terrifying. Um, <laughs> despite that, please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, the more people we get involved in this, the the more uh, fun stuff we can kind of add to this, and and uh, you know, include things like free one shots, things like that. Um, uh, and also, if you're looking to uh, check out some behind the scenes sort of stuff, uh, uh, following our social medias, as you can see in our new digs. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, way down at the bottom uh, is our uh, our tags for our Instagram and TikTok. Um, at it's a long story underscore ttrpg. Uh, and the same for our Twitch or YouTube, which I assume you see because you're looking at one of those now. Um, and I believe uh, that is it. Sweet. Cool. So before we begin tonight, we need to get an idea of where we left off. So, Lorianne, would you please do the honors? Yeah. <clears throat> so we started off the session with Saren, um, who hadn't taken a soul in a few days, um, turning into her ethereal form. So she um, ducked into an alley and um, sought out guidance from Venicepa um, to figure out what she needs to do next. Well, she knows what she needs to do, but to give her some guidance on who to do this to. Um, after about 10 minutes pass, she heard a distant sound of breaking glass and decides to move towards it. Um, on her way towards that sound, she bumped into a large, tall man with uh, greasy he hair and a, be a, beer ah, a beard, there we go, um, and sees an image of a skull protruding from his face and then uh, back in. So she takes it as a sign. Um, he also seems to be shocked um, by Saren, weirdly, and so she decides to follow him. Um, he's really suspicious, keeps looking back, but, uh, Saren is super sneaky and he doesn't see her. Um, but he does regardless pick up his pace and enters into a dilapidated house, which Saren, um, phases through the house, uh, to get a better look at him. When she gets in there, she's immediately met with clutter and moves towards the sound of the man who's furiously scribbling notes. Um, upon that, she notices a limp, um, or lifeless body in front of him. Um, Saren 
attempts to collect that the soul of the life, lifeless body, but it doesn't work, which she assumes means the soul is still connected. So she sends her hummingbird um, weapon into the dying body to ease its suffering, but upon closer look sees that there's a small knife already plunged into its heart. So Saren tries to get closer to investigate the body, um, but is stabbed by the man. She tries to ask him questions, but uh, he tries to attack her again, so she just knocks him out and ties him up. Saren then gets to examine the body closer and notices that the bone structure is not is just not right. Uh, the nose is broken, the cheekbones are protruding outward, and it's as if the whole face has moved forward. The eyes of the, life, of the lifeless body snap open and lunge at Saren. And that's where we uh, ended with Saren. Uh, then Guar found himself in the presence of King Isenbardus and Ixus Blackstone. Uh, he introduced himself and tells a story about Tal. The king asks for names, and Guar names his father, Grinchelli Mortimer and Ixu Blackstone. Um, Isenbardus then asks for proof, while Ixu tries to discredit Guar and call him a traitor's son. Guar states he was an eyewitness to many of the atrocities, but has no hard proof. Um, and he continues to plead his case, but does not cater to the king's ego, which displeases Isenbardus a lot. Um, the king basically tells Guar that he stands before him with no proof and should leave before he is imprisoned. Um, Guar leaves by telling him that when he realizes the threat is real and comes to his senses, he will fight for him. So Ilrin is asked to stay, stay behind, and Guar notices that she loses her composure for about a millisecond before she regains it and tells him to go back to Colville. Uh, Guar is, ex is escorted out and wanders around Eisenheim for a bit. Um, disappointed and frustrated, he looks around at how immaculate everything is in Eisenheim proper. He thinks about how powerful Eisenheim looks, but wonders what will happen when that power is challenged. Then a tall, half-elvish man with deep orange chestnut hair and deep blue robes approaches him. The man introduces himself as Tom um, and tells Guar they share similar thoughts regarding the state of Eisenheim. Um, Tom offers to get him a drink and... Guar, introducing himself as Tim, um, accepts the offer. However, they end up parting ways after a voice calls out from the church behind him and refers to the man as Reverend. Uh, Guar then makes his way back to the branches. Milo is reunited with his mom at Strings and Things. He's also introduced to his aunt Posey, who is his sister's mo uh, his, sis his mother's sister. Um, Milo learns some things about his family and asks Posey for the items that he ordered a few weeks ago. Brumhilda watches all this unfold with amusement and horror at times. Um, we learn that Posey married a half-elf, which led to a falling out with um, Milo's family. Um, but she's now widowed. They drink wine together, and Posey gets a little too drunk. Milo and Rosie then spend some time asking and answering questions back and forth. Milo fills uh, them in on things that have happened since he left Brunte and also asks for their assistance with making a disguise for Wilbur. Once Posey is off looking for his order, Milo shows his mom that he is a werewolf. Um, and Rosie is extremely loving and accepting, something that Milo hasn't gotten from anyone when he's shown that form, which is very sweet. Um, then Milo has a montage where he spills everything to his mom that has happened the entire campaign. And Brunhilde eventually leaves and heads back to the branches And while Milo and his mom continue working on Wilbur's disguise. And then back at the branches, Eldrin, Noros, and Wilbur are discussing and arguing over what Wilbur's backstory should be um, with the disguise they're coming up with. Eldrin and Noros have wild suggestions, but none are acceptable to Wilbur. And then Wilbur and Noros begin to argue, but Eldrin is oblivious and comments on how happy she is to have all of them together since, since things have been so bad lately. So the tension between Wilbur and Noros increase, and Eldrin misreads the situation, thinking that Norris is upset because of everything that happened with his adventuring party and not having the time to process it. So Norris ends up leaving the room for a bit, and which gives Eldrin and Wilbur time to chat, which they haven't been able to do in a while. Um, Eldrin tells Wilbur about what just recently happened with her brother Kanos, and Wilbur kind of teases slash asks questions about Eldrin's parents. Um, but Guar eventually gets back uh, to the branches, um, and after... Um, Broomhilda arrives shortly after that, and then Milo also arrives. Everyone but Saren are in Hagen's office, um, and he starts to fill us in on his meeting with the king. Before he can get too far, very excitedly, Milo presents Wilbur with the, dis the disguise that he made him, which basically is a black cloak with a veil so that he can be disguised as a widow. Um, Guar informs us that we need proof for the king. 
which Eldrin is very confused about because they have truth on their side, so why would they need proof? And this baffles Broomhilda, and she is absolutely flabbergasted that no one in the group thought about the fact that they might need proof when they're presenting something to a king whom they've never met. Um, so after Guar explains a little bit more of what's going on, Eldrin is very worried about her mom um, staying behind. She tries reaching out to her, receives no response, reaches out to Derek Erickson, and receives a very frustrating response back that basically a vague answer that she's fine, but it's cut off, so... She's not really sure what's going on, which leads to Eldrin starting to spiral and vows if anything happens to Ilarin, the full force of the Noria will come down and there's nothing the king can do to protect them. She then pivots to Hagen and goes off on him, uh, asking him if he has any proof about the cultists um, or if he's just been, you know, sitting on his hands this whole time. He, um, Hagen calls Eldrin out on her attitude and her tone, which she apologizes for and rephrases her question, um, but he unfortunately has no proof to offer because he stopped the investigation after what happened to Noros's group. Um, and so he did find one interesting thing, though, and found mentions of Ogremok and a group that called themselves the family. Yes, indeed. Milo's cool. best friend. <laughs> uh, anything else we missed? All right, cool. Noros oh, is oh. a dick. <gasps> he is not. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mute. Just He's um, rude. Uh, cool. All right, Kate. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to. He's stressed out. He should be on his honeymoon right now. Yeah. yeah. This, this is, is his honeymoon. Stressed. This is his everybody, honeymoon. Everybody, He's stressed out. Everybody Wilbur at this has... table, <laughs> give me a big. <sighs> <laughs> Great. And, uh, Saren, as you're doing that, go ahead and give me a dick 30 saving throw. Cool. Should be on his honeymoon. It's a good thing I have a plus 10. 13. Okay, with a 13. <laughs> um, oh, the new dice are the new dice are going away now. Garbage. What a start. Um, this is not sponsored by BioWare. <laughs> <laughs> uh with a 13, as we cut uh we do a quick cut into uh, Saren being knocked to the ground uh, by this creature that was at one point uh, a dead, seemingly dead body on a table. Um, uh, you see the veins uh, start to bulge, the body, the bones in the face starting to break and extend out into this weird, almost reptile-like uh, creature. The, uh, the eyes that are snapped open have sunk closer in um, as uh, the uh, elongated claws that have seemed to come out have slapped uh, Saren down to the ground. Uh, Saren, please roll initiative for me. Uh, 16. 16, okay. Um, so it is going to go first. Um, as you see, uh, you fall to the ground and all of a sudden you see it pounce on top of you and is going to take three attacks. Uh, first That's attack stupid. is a 22 to hit. Yeah. Okay. Second one's a 21. Yep. And then the last one is a 16. Uh, that does not hit. You got it. Cool. So for the first attack, as you um, uh, feel this thing uh, pouncing on you, uh, you can hear and smell the saliva and the uh, uh, the extending, protruding uh, teeth very quickly changing into fangs. Uh, that is going to be... Um, as 13 points of slashing damage for the first attack, and I need a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, evasion wouldn't have helped with the dex save, would it? Since it didn't do damage directly? Correct. I okay. believe so. Yeah. Um. You still have... Um, you still have... It's either evasion or the other rogue version uh, ability uh, as a reaction. 
I, yeah, uh, uncanny to be able dodge. To take half damage. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so you could choose to take that now or wait until I make the next roll. Uh, probably now. Okay. So that is a 13 for the con save. 13 in the con save. Okay. Um, so the first attack, as you uh, as you see it slash in, um, you you actually feel and I think instinctively cry out in pain, Saren, as you feel whatever uh, like pauldron you have on the side uh, on the on your shoulder, um, it sinks in through, uh, piercing into your shoulder and severing something very important in there. Um, uh, as you are. Uh, you are under a condition that we call the bleeding condition. Uh, the second attack, uh, however, uncanny dodge, you're having that damage, right? So that would be uh, down to six. Okay, cool. Uh, good choice. The second attack was a lot left in damage. Uh, that is uh, 10 points of uh, slashing damage to you. Um, and uh, it misses on its last attack um, you see it uh, is still on top of you uh, snarling into your face um, as it is your turn at the top of your turn uh, you uh, feel a uh, uh, you feel something whatever tendon that has pierced into here uh, is bleeding profusely um, as you take another four points of, uh, 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 we'll say, piercing damage at the top, uh, the top of your turn. Mm -hmm. um, um, last thing I'm going to ask for you before you go. Uh, have you been, uh, has Saren been under the effect of the bleeding condition before? No. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to say, uh, Saren, go ahead and roll me a medicine check uh, at the top of your turn. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, you know a couple things. Uh, with a dirty 20, uh, feeling the amount of, of how heavy this wound is, uh, you know that moving, uh, uh, mechanically speaking, taking movement is going to cause another, uh, another splurt of blood coming out. Um, so you're going to be taking more damage if you move. Uh, you also know that this is going to keep happening until you are healed. So it is your turn. Mm -hmm. Is she able to pull out her hummingbird dart and send it off? I know that's like technically a range, but it flies on its own. So can it like zoom up and like go into the back of this creature? Uh, I would allow, we're gonna say it's, uh, we'll kind of keep that same sort of like ranged weapon rules and the idea that it's disadvantaged because it's a ranged weapon and the idea of like mm -hmm. the disadvantage is you like getting it out and being able to kind of like send it on its way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I rolled two 18s. Okay, nice, yeah. Uh, 23 one, 33, 30, 33 to hit. 33 will hit, for sure. Absolutely. Um, two, two, three. That is... Uh, 12 points of damage. Okay. Uh, 12 points of damage uh, piercing into its back. You hear it kind of like screech out as you uh, may have managed to hit like uh, an area where like the spinal column is still kind of engorging and, and spreading out. Um, it is uh, uh, um, uh, it is definitely hurt by that. Uh, so it's taking full damage on that. Uh, it seems like you still have some ways to go. Anything else? Um. Is she able to do anything as a bonus action then? Any you tell me. Atta attack. Uh, I will like, say in this case, you are, not, um, you are not restrained. Okay. Um, 
I think not technically like she couldn't take out a dagger and like go for it all I have listed is my scimitar and I didn't use that for the first one so. yeah um I'm guessing you no know. yeah Uh, you are currently in your spectral form, right? How long does that last? Uh, ten minutes? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, that's not a bonus action to do so, but, um, I will say if you want to use your bonus action as an idea of, like, being able to, like, like, trying to, like, phase through this thing to appear on the other side of it, I would allow that. Okay. To just put yourself in kind of a more, uh, basically yeah. get you away from being prone uh, like, without taking mm -hmm. that bleed damage. Yeah, she's gonna cool. do that. You got it. All like, right. Well. Just floats up and then through. Yeah. As in the creepiest like... way you can think of. <laughs> as you, as you now kind of appear on the other side of this creature. Um, uh, great. Uh, cool. Uh, it is now uh, its turn. Uh, it is going to turn, uh, like flip over and face you as it does so, actually. Okay, cool. Um, as it turns to face you, you notice that its head and, and uh, the limbs that are necessary for it to turns to face you, but the rest of the torso actually stays put. Um, as it is uh, matching you in the creepiness uh, vibe, for sure. Uh, you see uh, the the arm that is going to attack you with also spins around um, and swipes at you uh, for three attacks. Okay, uh, that is a dirty 20. Yep. 19. Uh, I am, my armor class is 19. Meets it, beats so, it. Yeah. Uh, and then a 17. So the last one misses. No. If I cut off my finger and offer it, do you think it'll stop? Wrong game. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, so good. We are we are in the uh, the heavy parts of uh, this the same uh, the same we're in the same stakes, we'll say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It's uh, giving me the same creepy vibe. I don't like it. 100%. Put off your finger and use it to put it in the wound to like staunch the bleeding, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's how that works. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is uh, 11 points of damage. Oh. Uh, I can uncanny dodge again, right? Uh, every reaction. Yeah, so you have reaction every time on your, on your turn. Uh, okay. uh, so that would be. You'll have to choose to use it now or on this next roll. That's too now bad. is fine. Cool. Was that five then? Yes, Once that would be half to five. Okay. Uh, this uh, this second attack uh, is fourteen points of piercing damage. Okay, I should save that. Uh, and you are already under the bleeding condition, so you don't need to make rolls for that. Um, but. Uh, at the top of your turn. Uh, uh, on your turn, you are taking six points of, uh, we'll call it piercing damage for this, um, uh, as the blood continues to kind of splurred out. Um, I'll say this, uh, Saren, before uh, before we kind of like have mechanically you go, uh, where are you at hit points wise? Uh, 49 out of 94. Okay, cool. So we're... We're in that kind of like sort of like halfway sort of point. So go ahead and describe to me what uh, what Saren is looking like, uh, thinking, uh, things like that. Um, her her spectral form is, I guess, kind of perched on the table that this body was just on, and she's just like holding the the wound, and she's just like kind of eyes darting around the room, like, oh shit, no one mm -hmm. knows I'm here what the fuck do I do retreat is always like, an option <laughs> retreat is always an option the hard thing is, is you're going to be taking uh, every turn you're going to be taking uh, a hit at the top of your turn and if you're moving so there's literally no way I'm making it regardless 
there's no buddy. Well, it depends. I mean, if you're running and looking for help, there's... Okay. Um... I, I guess she'll just fight back. Uh, okay. Pull out her scimitar. Do you have a potion? Nope. Mm. I don't think so. Nope. I have my talisman that I don't know what it is yet, technically. Mm -hmm. Uh, 15 to hit? Uh, 15 does not hit. Okay. Uh, bonus action? Uh, what, uh, what are you doing in your bonus action? Oh, uh, the other side of the scimitar. You got it. So, the other side, 25 definitely hits. Here is my D4. Oh, seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, all right. I had this marked up, and now I'm now I'm realizing the numbers are that's the wrong thing. I need to stop touching that. Um, what was the first amount of damage you did? Is it 14 or 12? Um, 14 sounds good. <laughs> that's really good. Anybody remember? Uh, I'll give you 14. Uh, so it's on me. I have, and then I have a plus eight, so that sounds right. Okay. Uh, and then this uh, this time around, the damage you did was seven. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, as you uh, as you see, uh, you're using your scimitar now, just kind of like. Uh, so first one you completely miss, but it gears you up for the second one to kind of come down on it. Um, as you uh, slice down into it, um, uh, uh, as you do so, uh, you see uh, there is a uh, a point where you strike through into its its body, but you can also see that the um, at this moment the bones that uh, that are here forming, like the rib cage and things like that, are now starting to engorge and break out uh, to make that sort of like uh, uh, chitinous or chitinous like armor. Um, I can never remember which one it is. Uh, that is happening. Um, next turn, its armor class is going to go up. This thing is nasty. Um, okay. Uh, so you do uh, that damage. Uh, anything else on Saren's turn? Nope. Can't do anything else. You got it. All right. Uh, on its turn, uh, it looks at you. You can see its eyes kind of turn to this very, uh, very bright uh, sickly green um, as it uh, launches itself up at you. Um, it's going to take one of its uh, uh, one of its attacks to try to knock you prone. Um, I need a dexterity saving throw. Uh, Twenty five. Twenty five. Cool. With the 25, you're able to kind of maneuver off it. And now both of you are on the table. The table itself kind of like rocking back and forth in the weight from both of you um, as it is going to. Uh, uh, take two more attacks, uh, both of which uh, miss you as it's on the table. It rolled a three and a four. Um, uh, as now pulling out that scimitar, you're able to kind of like cling, cling off the uh, the claws that are coming in. Uh, all right. Uh, Saren, it's your turn. Uh, top, of your, uh, top of your turn. Nine points of uh, piercing damage. Um, well, I'm going to uh... She is going to bonus attack or bonus action to disengage and phase back through the wall that she came in. Cool. You got it. Uh, so through phasing uh, through the wall, we'll say that that is not uh, that is not movement, but I would assume you're going to be taking movement after for that. So allow mm -hmm. I'll allow that to kind of be as part of the bonus action for this, uh, as we kind of liked that before. Um, so you have full movement here. Um. That 
the temple of was it the temple of Bahamut mm-hmm. that we had been at previously? We were at Il Mater. It was Il Mater. We, we know where the we know there's also a temple of Bahamut. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we we were at two different ones. The Friar Cruz guy, which one wasn't? It's been a million years ago. Bruce was um, at did, did he Elmater, die? I believe. Yeah, is I think he the one that got killed? The, yeah, I think he's the one that Quar killed. Or my thought Quark. that was that um, if I actually could probably pull it up, uh, if I was near that temple, I would. Yeah, Friar at the Temple of Bahamut in Colville. Okay. If I could like find that temple. Would there most likely be a cleric there? Even if uh, Friar Cruz was murdered. I think that's a um, that's a solid guess. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I would I would argue. Well, the hard thing is is that even getting back to the Bitches Brew, uh, there's you're not really sure if there's anyone there who would have healing powers. Um, as uh, everyone has now moved uh, to Midtown. Um, so yeah, um, uh, do me a favor. I'll allow you to roll this because we never really defined this very much. Uh, give me a... Does she specifically need healing or can she do a medicine check to like... She specifically needs herself. healing. Okay. Yeah, which would be a potion or, uh, or uh, magic. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, roll me 3d10, Saren. You want low. Uh, three, four, and four. Okay, great. Um, so that is... Uh, the, uh, and we'll say also on top of this, uh, because it's been a minute, we'll say, and you're also very, you know, I'm going to say, give me a survival check to be able to kind of get an idea of like where to go to be able to get there quickly. Uh, 30. 30. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so you get, you like, you kind of like you phase out, you're looking around, you can see that you're bleeding, you know, down your shirt all the way. Uh, through that, you've taken a couple of hits as well that are also uh, having that sort of bleed happening. Um, but looking around, you uh, uh, you get an idea of where you are on the street, and you start to take off running. Um, uh, you, uh, it is going to take uh, uh, 310 feet to get there. As you make your movement, you're taking another seven points of uh, piercing damage. So you can dash on your next turn, right? Because you have you dash this turn action. too. Oh yeah. yeah. Or sorry, no, you just use your bonus action to move through. Apologies. You can but use you can your action your to dash. Action. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So my my speed is thirty five, like my base speed. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so dash yeah, doubles your dashes. movement. Okay. Yep. So was that seventy? Does she is. Does she have an idea where this temple is? Yep. Yeah, with a third, you absolutely she, do. Yeah. So she's dashing towards it. You got it. Cool. Uh, so moving that seventy feet. Next turn, can't you double dash because it's a bonus action and an action? Yes. Yeah, that was my question. Okay. God, I'm gonna have to do math. So that would be 105? 70. 105? Um, I think. No, it'd be 140. 70 plus 70. Right? Am I not doing math correctly? Hold on. No, uh, it, nope, it doubles from the original number. Or no, no, I'm sorry. It does stack. No. No, it doesn't. 35. Not for this. Dashing is thirty-five times movement, three. So. <laughs> dashing oh, twice. Oh, I thought you could double dash because she can dash twice. Because you can, but it's just it's just it's thirty. It's adding thirty-five three times. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
which is... It's 105, right? 105? Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, you start to uh, take off running, um, uh, moving that uh, full uh, uh, 70 feet. Um, uh, behind you, you hear a, uh, a crash as uh, some of the... Uh, uh, the boarded up windows, you can hear a splintering wood kind of break out. Um, you start to hear screams behind you um, as this thing is uh, looking for you. Um, uh, I would say based on your dash, um, uh, well, your rogue, I'll, allow, I'll kind of allow this. Uh, looking back, you, uh, you don't see it behind you at this moment. Um, so uh, it is uh, your turn. Uh, I will, assuming you're moving, I'll roll the damage all together. Uh, that is 16 points of piercing damage. Am I getting damage for every time I dash? Is that what's happening? Every time you're making a movement, yeah. Not not uh, separated, but so you took damage at the top of your turn from bleed, and then also making movement. I'm not so. gonna make it. <laughs> Literally. Are, are you down? Uh, 17. 17. Not okay. if I move again. Cool. So at a hundred, uh, moving a hundred and five, right? Yeah. So she moved a hundred and five plus the seventy, 70. already. So that would, she has 135 left, I believe. Wait, yeah. No. You so said it was, 310. Oh, I said 310. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, I put the wrong number down. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be tricky. Is there anyone uh, around her? Uh, there are screaming people around, yeah. Does anyone look like a healer? <laughs> I mean, anyone could have a potion. Uh, right now, uh, I'll say give me a, give me an investigation check with disadvantage. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Uh, with a twenty-two, um, you know, running around, feeling your, feeling your body slowly going into essentially shock. Um, you see that everybody around you seems to be extremely wide-eyed, uh, not necessarily based on your uh, uh, on like your wounds or whatever, uh, but because you are still spectral and moving. So for a lot of these people, they're seeing a essentially a ghost moving uh, past, as well as hearing the sounds of uh, uh, this. Uh, these, this rather large growling beast that has now been let loose in the town. Um, okay, so 310 minus 70 uh, minus uh, 110. No, 110 or 105? 105. 105. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, the good thing is, is that you might get right to the doorstep and then pass out, and then you have death saving throws, and they're a church. <laughs> they should help. I will mention this, as you guys are very quick to remind remind me, it's only been a week. Mm-hmm. It's been uh, two weeks. It's been two weeks? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we now we know it's two weeks. Because um, uh, I'm measuring off that Norris and Elder have been married for a week, so. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, cool. So, uh, I just lost where we are movement wise. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, it is, uh, going to try to make, a, basically like another survival check to try to find and hunt down the prey that they, that they know is bleeding. Um, rolling crazy low for that. Um, you're hearing screams, but they seem to be more distant behind you. Um, so now getting the idea that you might be able to kind of get away from this creature and now the only thing you have to worry about is the bleed that you're uh, possibly succumbing to. 
uh, uh, top of the turn in movement, right? Okay. Uh, go ahead and tell me what your uh, what are what, what is Saren's current HP at? Seventeen. Seventeen. I rolled very low. A one, a one, a two, and a four. Um, uh, so that is. Uh, Eight points of damage. And moving to that 105, that gives you uh, 30 feet of movement left on this. Um, I will roll uh, one more time on its turn, but it essentially has to get a nat 20 to pick up the scent and start to kind of chase after you. Hold a four. Um, so, uh, for sure at this moment, as you're trying to make your final movements, uh, coming in, uh, here, so you eight is 17, so you, uh, have nine points left. Uh, yeah. Okay. You got it. Um, anything else? Like what is, uh, what is Saren thinking as you see the, uh, I'll say you see the church, uh, uh, at a distance, only 30 feet away. Um, she's just thinking, go inside find someone who looks like they can do the same healing stuff as Eldrin. Tell them you're friends with a paladin of Bahamut. <laughs> like, just very technical, like, how to convince them really quickly to heal me so I don't pass out and die. You got it. So I think with this, I've been rolling it kind of like all together. But what we'll do is we will say, um, uh, we will say that the, uh, the first rolls are what you get at the beginning of your turn, which could, which could knock you down outright. Uh, with uh, the poss- uh, there, there's a chance that it could before you make your movement. The next roll is to see, uh, we'll say at the end of your movement, and we'll say kind of like the end of your turn. We'll, we'll make it simplified in that. Uh, all right. Uh, so the top of your turn, um, collecting yourself, trying to you see the end in sight. Uh, you are taking bleed damage at the top. It's a five and a six. Saren goes down in the middle of the street of Dare's Wharf. Nope. Oh, wow. I traveled really far. We're not in Dare's Wharf. Dude, we're not in Dare's uh, sorry. <laughs> in Colville. Uh, and with that, we're going to pause Saren there. For the rest of you, you are in the branches uh, under, uh, uh, I think, uh, at a certain point, kind of like clamored into Hagen's um, like office, I believe, uh, which is getting very crowded. Um, uh, uh, as you guys are trying to kind of uh, figure out what to do next, um, we will take it from there. So... He just mentioned Ogremok and the family. So I want to give Jamie the opportunity if he, Jamie wants to say anything as soon as he hears the family. Um, I think, yeah, I think Milo would, uh, like Milo's eyes would kind of like show that he recognizes that name, but he, he's not going to say anything. He's already, he's already pissed off, uh, He's already pissed them off enough by being too quick to... Have you said the family to us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with um, with Cabbish. Yes, and he was not pleased. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I look at Milo to see if he's going to say anything. And I notice he's, he's gonna... not. Okay. Guar, you have that coin from... Great. While you're all saying this, I'm fishing it out of my bag. Like, oh, I have this. Uh, this is has uh, has that name on it. Is oh it... wait, too, Noros. So much has happened. I gave you back Sylvia's journal. I don't think you've even looked at it. We can give that to Hagen. Maybe you can find something in it. It, it also says Moore's initiative on it. Yes, it's primordial. And you, your pronunciation is absolutely horrid. Well, I don't speak primordial, so that makes sense. 
Okay, wow. Well. Do you want it or not? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, this this is... Grix told you to use this to get a favor, correct? Yeah, it looks like it has a hole in it. I wonder if it, like, fits somewhere, like a, like a piece of a puzzle or something. Um, does Norris give the journal that I said that he has? Or do you not hear what I said? I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I, I, so I just turn to Norris and I say, Norris, you still have, I gave you back Sylvia's journal. I know we haven't really had a chance to look through it, but can yeah. you, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, here. It just kind of hands it to you. It seems okay. a little invasive to read someone's journal, don't you think? Well, I mean, it had important information about, um, what she was doing and what they were researching. I, I pass it to Hagen. I say, I couldn't really make any heads or tails of it. But... Does the does the coin open the that, journal? It's sensitive to read somebody's journal. <laughs> uh, you see, like Hagen looking at Guar and just opening the journal. Yeah, but, <laughs> Guar, what are you talking? Also, I mean, fine. Is dead. I know that sounds insensitive, but but she is, and this could help save lives, I'm sure. I don't, I don't know. I didn't know her, but I'm assuming she's the type of person that wouldn't want people to die when she has relevant information. R.I.P. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. So... What did, what did, I'm, I'm just trying to remember, what did he say about the family? Just that he found something interesting that mentioned Ogre Mock and the family. Yeah, I think, um, like, looking, uh, we'll say, like, we don't have to RP this one, but I'll say that he said that there was, um, uh, there was evidence that proved, uh, like, inscriptions that were, uh, we'll say for simplicity's sake, were actually kind of incredibly hard to read, but uh, uh, talked about a uh, a ritual um, to possibly bring uh, Ogre Mok back. Um, okay. And, and then uh, uh, I, I will say, I think, you know, as far as the involvement of the family, it is just an idea that that was like, um, that in that inscription, those two words were found to be together and seemed to be a title. Um, okay. Uh, as far as... Uh, I think an important note to say on this, it doesn't say necessarily if they were the ones that really are behind all that. Mm-hmm. Just that it's it's broken up in that same inscription. Okay. So Eldrin says, well, this coin says death is the beginning. Um, from the little I know about it, they're not a good organization. <laughs> they're at best a rival of persona at worst a an enemy so also they got the order completely backwards <sighs> maybe i don't think so, so how smart can they be how come every weird group has some sort of slogan do we need a slogan well, you know, no it's like a rally, it's like a rally time. cry like I, I, it gives people something to chant People okay. like chanting. I would say, like, I obviously, like, Wilbur saying this in jest, but I would say for, like, for, like, Guar and Eldrin, uh, you guys recognize that these are, like, this is essentially kind of, like, it's similar to, like, bannermen things. Mm-hmm. Like, having, like, uh, you know, having the, uh, having the name of a group or an institution or even, like, a family usually has something attached to it, I say. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I say, well, the phrase here that, you know, means death is the beginning is also a it represents the primordial plane of earth because that is where they are from or old grimar mock whatever hails from um uh milo roll me a i would say roll me a history check no (laughs) no (laughs) i don't want to no that history uh is a 24. Damn. Uh, cool. Uh, with the 24, uh, I think you're in, I think Milo's probably intensely listening in on this conversation, but just not, you know, not really choosing not to really take part in giving information that you know. Um, 
Mm-hmm. But one of the things that you that uh, you you do know about this is that even though obviously the family is a phrase that you're very familiar with, uh, death is uh, death is the beginning is not a phrase that you've seen or heard uh, represented anywhere near the uh, the place that you know uh, that is called that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a fairly innocuous name. Like a, a pretty obvious name could be any. Anybody could be like, yeah, we're the family. Do you see that? Do you see, are you saying that out loud? No. Okay. I think that's Milo's like inner monologue <laughs> of like benefit of the doubt of like they were really nice to me and like the soup was pretty good. It could be anybody. Okay. <laughs> it could be another the family. Conveniently why forgetting the terribly creepy puppet boy. Well, why don't we just reach out to them and ask them? I mean, Milo, you're friends with, with, um, what's his name? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, if you don't want to, I mean, I can, but I can't until tomorrow. Oh, I Milo can do wouldn't it. have said any of that out loud. I'll take I'm your bracelet. Saying. No, 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 I, no, but Eldrin does ask, because she knows oh. the family from when, what's yeah. his name? Why yeah. can't I think of his name? Cavish. Micah, No. No, Cavish. Cavish. So, yeah, Eldrin says, I mean, we can just reach out to Cavish and ask him. I nope. know he was a little cagey no, um, about that. But... Yeah, I know we... we uh, so he's going to look at uh, Hagen and say, like, when I... Um, so when I was uh, kind of transported up north, I had heard kind of a story of a group called The Family, but I... Um, so maybe, maybe related up towards that area, but... And they have catfish in a yeah, cage there. Around. What? You said something about catfish in a cage? Eldrin, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're saying. You said that there was we could talk to a catfish, but then there, it might be in a cage? I'm going to we can, continue to we can ta- We can talk about this later. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I can, yeah, I can try and get more information. Um, hang on. Please, uh, as you mentioned, uh, maybe it has no connection. You said this was, uh, did you say how far north this was or did you say north? No, I just up north. Oh, I would say you would ask how far up north. Honestly, I, I don't know. I've been, I've been between since I've known Broomhilda I have been teleported like five times and I have no idea where anything is okay it was near the grove wasn't it just... you're saying things that Hagen has no idea what you guys are talking about yeah and Milo's gonna like uh, honestly maybe um, I can um, and he's gonna like make <laughs> not with Eldrin because she she wouldn't pick it up but he's gonna make eye contact with Noros and 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 say we, we can get information later and say and say it in that way. Noros just looks back at you like. Yeah. That's fine. Why didn't you look at him like that? Because Eldrin's not great with facial expressions, and... Oh, no, no, she's not. <laughs> yeah, because you should say what you mean instead of giving me wide eyes and thinking that I can read minds. Uh, hey, can uh, you have a looking glass? Maybe she could practice her facial expressions in the mirror. It's clear that there are mixed company in the presence of full trust. And that is totally fine. I will excuse myself uh, if there is things that you discover that are important and pertain to the people here. Please well, let me know. Can you leave the journal? Thank you, Hagen. I, I'm, I mean, I'm going to no. look through to see if there's anything about Ogremok in it. Yeah. 
If you'd allow me to peruse it first, I can make sure that I give it back to you uh, before you leave. Very well. No, you see, was, like, I, Hagen I, is, I like, no he's hesitating to say, like, you guys had it for how long? <laughs> and Eldrin read it, like, yeah. some of it, but a lot of it was about Noros. <laughs> so. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> Which I don't think Noros knows, because I don't think he actually read it. I don't think he had it either. And yeah, Milo's was going to say, I mean, I mean, no disrespect, Hagen, I just, we've, um... A lot of people have tried to kill us for me not saying, for me saying things out of hand, so I'm trying to be as, uh, trying to play things closer to the chest right now. What are you playing? Uh, that that means that uh. he's, 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 he's holding back information for a better time to share it. Why wouldn't you just say that? Because it's more fun it's that way. to say it the other way. Yes. I accept that answer. Um, I, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, just, just move on. Okay. I mean, yeah. We can, go, yeah. We, yeah. We, we, we can talk to Grix. I mean, he he's the one that gave you the coin. He has to know things about... Uh, he gave me the coin. Uh, okay. He gave you the coin, so you can talk to him. Is I that will. better? Yes. I would okay. love to talk to who? Guar. Grix, you know. No, the, the, I, I, I'm the not going to talk to myself. Okay. Grix, the guy, the guy whose kid we um we yeah. stopped from being. Oh, assisted. that was mm-hmm. fucked up. Yes, we should talk to him. Yeah. He gave me the coin. And also yeah. all the beers. Grix, that the coin from Grix. the bitches brew, and you didn't recognize him there. Oh, the barkeep. Yes. Yes. Oh, Same guy, but... I was busy. Okay. And drunk. Um. Wasn't that drunk? Back to proof, though. You mentioned we need proof. Do you think the book that Lorath took could be considered proof? I Listen, mean, I am willing. Names. I am willing to to look at anything or find anything that could be. Uh, worthy of of the king's idea of proof. So yes, I I am open to that idea. Well, I have used both my bracelet and Norris's, so I can no longer contact anyone today. Can you contact Lorath and ask him if we can have it? I don't know how that conversation will go. I'm guessing it will go poorly, but wow. No, on his side, he was the weird one, right? He he, <laughs> like he was difficult to talk to. Wow, you're accepting answers. You're saying I'm not the weird one. What is happening today? Is there a full moon? Wait, hang on. Sorry. No no offense, Milo. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, there was one recently. Um... <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, right. <clears throat> but I mean, we, we know that that book listed Grancelli's name as well as others that at the time we didn't recognize, but we might recognize now because we never got those names. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, could I have uh, the... the I'll, I'll try. Okay. I give him my bracelet. Cool. <laughs> We don't even need it. Like, we just need it for a little bit, and then he can have Lorath! it. Lorath! It's Gwar! Um. Do you still have that book? We may need it for a very important mission. Please respond. Hope you're well. Gwar. Best. No response. He probably doesn't even remember us. Hey, it was like not. It was like three <clears> weeks <throat> or a month ago. How can you not remember us? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't. I don't know. Uh, he did leave really without saying goodbye. So, yeah, I don't think we made a great impression. Probably. That well, also, he didn't make a good impression on me then. That seemed to be his way, also. So, he did have that kick-ass orb, though. Oh, that orb was very shiny. Should we check in on Saren? I mean, Gwar's already going to have to repeat everything he said. And maybe instead of going further in this investigation, we should wait for her. 
Well, I mean, we don't need to just sit here and stand here waiting for her to show up. I mean, we could probably still keep talking about it. Oh, yes, but I mean, can you check in with her, see where she is? Oh, how many of these things do I still have? Um, I believe you have at least one more. I don't know if you've already used it today. Saren! It's Guar! Where are you? We miss you. Hope you're well. Best, (laughs) Guar! Jesus. I don't know you're injured (laughs) and bleeding out in the street. Uh, so... So, time-wise, this becomes a little timey-wimey, which may be useful here. So, I will say, uh... Saren. Give me a luck roll. Uh, DC is 15. 17. 17? Cool. Uh, with a 17, um... Uh, you are feeling yourself about to go down um, as you hear this. Is she able to respond? Yeah, that's that's why I'm giving it to you. Um, she just like breathlessly yells like uh, about to bleed out Temple of Bahamut Colville Hurry. Please. That's it. Do you see, like, the color drain from your from Guar's face? I'd say, I mean, Guar, roll me an insight check, but I'd say the DC's, like, five here, as Saren is not one that cracks <laughs> jokes very much. He rolled much. a one, he's like, oh, what a jokester. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess it's a possibility. But I, have a I, I think I'm doing this. Insight. I think I'm doing this because I know what Mike would say. It's like, do I know that that's true or not? Um, so I'm giving. I'm doing it already. Uh, yeah, you. You're concerned. That sounds real. Yeah. Oh, shit, we gotta find Sarah now. Why? What's wrong? I relay the information to the group. Okay. Um, can Broomhilda? Actually, I turn to Broomhilda. Can you? Can you get us there faster than walking? Um, it's been the same day, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, hmm. One second. I'll say feel free to talk amongst yourself. This is going to give me a I am sprinting out the door. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say like the there's a there's a point where like mechanically I would give this to you as soon as possible. Um, so we'll say as you guys are well say this as you guys are like running out the door you're passing by uh, you're passing by Hagen Hagen starts to say something and you I, I imagine you guys just kind of push past. Um, I don't brush out. I wait for Broomhilda because I know it's faster. She can do her thing. She's following with you. She's going with you. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. also, Wilbur, do you have on your disguise? <clears throat> uh, no. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm just going to throw my cloak hood up over my... Up over my head as much as I can without completely okay. blinding myself. If Wilbur allows Elder to, she'll pick him up. <sighs> okay, fine, fine. Um, who's the fastest here? I have haste. That's not what I was asking. Okay. Mine's thirty feet. I think Milo's the fastest. Oh, Milo is the fastest. I don't know where. Yeah, I'm 45 feet. 45 feet, cool. Um, so, uh, obviously you guys can you know use whatever you want, but um, uh, uh, what Broomhilda can do, I'm checking just to make sure there's not anything else. Um, because to even like make a teleportation circle to be able to kind of get there is going to take 10 minutes. Um, so okay. it's... A little bit of a six of one situation. Um, 
Uh, oh no, she does have uh, teleport, but she used that. Can um, I um, roll divine intervention? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't done it yet. Okay. Oh, so close. I rolled 15. Damn, Ugh. that is close. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, what she can do is... Uh, all she can do is cast haste on Milo. Which, Milo, you also have like bonus action dash, too. Yeah, I do, yeah. And the way... Uh, I, be- I believe... I believe the way haste works. Let me just check to make sure. My speed is double. Do you have a healing potion on you, Milo? I do. Good. I think it's a greater healing. Did the healing potion do anything anyway, though? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You said healing oh. potion or healing or magic. Healing. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. Know. So yeah. So the way that that works. Uh, uh, Milo is that so your speed would be doubled with haste and then you're able to dash and then bonus action dash if you're willing to spend the key point for it um, so your your what your you know what your timesing by three is uh, instead of what well, you said 45 45 yeah it would be 90 um, uh, so uh, we can go that route What's that? So it'd be 270. 270. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, so 270, I would say, you know, the range of where you guys go, it, it's, it takes time to get there. Um, this is a point where we have to kind of look into the uh, basic mechanics of it. I'm trying to think. I would imagine. One second, I'm just trying to kind of get an idea of how to be able to. It's not helpful. Okay. Um, so I would say it's at, it's at least a mile away. So we would say it's a mile. Um, so a mile is 5,280 feet. So even with that 270, uh, it's going to be difficult. If Saren's able to uh, possibly stabilize herself, uh, then you are uh, going to be looking at an unconscious Saren um, on the ground. But also that has been on there for, that has been there for uh, probably not more than like maybe two minutes. That would be five times six seconds. Right? Because no. you said you have 290. Or wait, how many? 270. 270. 270. Yeah. 270. Yeah. And then what's so the what's out to be mind? about uh, four. It works out to be about five minutes of running. Well, no. Wait, because. Six seconds is a round. Is a round. Yeah. So if you have 270 feet and you divide that by the 5,000, whatever, you get like. Wait, how much is it? 5,000 and what? It would be uh, two minutes. 5,280. It would be two minutes. Because mm-hmm. if, if, if it's 270 per round and six seconds per round, 10 rounds of six per minute. Yes. So about so two 20, minutes. So 2,700. Yeah. So about, yeah. So, so less, okay. than, less than two, really. I mean... So she can't stabilize herself with um, with um, a healing check, right? 
you said. She can. This is this oh. is this is checking in to see like before. We're making sure we're we're kind of handling everything mechanically above board right now, so that we're that we're aware of all the information we have. Um, so there's a possibility that with that um, with that death saving throw that she would be making, if she succeeds all three, yeah, um, she is going one. to be she's going to be stable. I will say there's going to be some most likely probably some lasting effects from that that would be that would, that would last some time we'll kind of work that out uh, a little bit later um but um yeah so that would have to be three successes uh, to do that um okay so any other questions before we start that Okay. Oh, did you roll them all already? Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that's not very suspenseful, but okay. Um, uh, cool. Uh, so, and I believe, uh, let me just check one thing. I just want to make sure. This is from the... Oh, I didn't end up 100% giving you that. Does bleed like a new mechanic? Uh, we used bleed before. Um, I guess there's a possibility we didn't use it with you guys, but we've been using it uh, a little bit. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, what is happening? Okay, did you delete it? Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, cool. So here's what I will say with this, uh, because we know mechanically speaking, Saren, you're going to uh, you're going to be able to uh, be alive during this. Um, but I would say in in game, uh, actually, if you don't mind, because there's a there's a whole thing that's kind of like aligned with this. Uh, so if you don't mind just having those those roles as being like kind of separated for now, um, you know, what? there's no way to make that work. That's fine. That's what happens. Um, so we'll we'll speed forward. Uh, Milo, you find uh, Theron's body very unconscious on the ground, stable but unconscious. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure what to do because he doesn't heal people or deal with people's injuries. Um, he uh, he sees Saren unconscious on the ground and um, panics. Um, and like falls to his knees and dramatically grabs his potion of greater healing, uh, opens Saren's mouth and uh, and pours it into her mouth while screaming, "Why God? Why?" Uh, Milo. Massages her neck. I'm so sorry. It hastes only lasts a minute. Okay. But she'd still be stabilized by the time he gets there. I guess. I mean, we. <laughs> I mean, she would mechanically. Right. We kind of we kind of broke a couple DM things here on this. Uh, uh, so, I will say. I mean, uh, Mila, give me a. Until after his next turn. Okay, so it's only six seconds after that. Um, so yeah, so you lose haste. So we'll say, uh, Milo, roll me a d10. Was a nine. Cool. Uh, it takes nine minutes for you to get to Saren. I'm going to roll a couple of things on my side here. Uh, Milo. Give me a perception yeah. check. Twenty six. Twenty six. 
The 26, I'd say, you know, like truly like flying through um, at top speed. Uh, you're uh, flying through to Midtown, um, uh, uh, or flying through from Midtown, going right into Colville. Um, as you are, uh, uh, I believe, Saren, did you mention where you were? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it's the Temple of Bahamut. Great. And then did I have you make a survival check to, uh, like, Mild, like, know where that is? No. Go ahead and roll that survival check for me. Uh, 11. 11. Okay. Uh, with an 11, um, with an 11, you get into Colville um, and you are leagues ahead of everybody else. I would say you're probably like a solid we'll say you're a solid uh, you're a solid minute because it's only going to be like lasting a minute I believe if I recall correctly um, no. no, 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 it's way more now my math is screwed up. I would say you're about five minutes ahead of everybody um, you are hearing screaming um uh, distant screaming and it's hard for you to not think to go in that direction um, so I will say uh, Milo you feel lost about about where the I will say like above board Milo doesn't know this but above board about where that abandoned house is mm. um, Do you uh, see a trail of blood with a 26 perception check what Perception. Oh, uh, I know. Uh, Eldrin asked if I or, uh, saw. What did you have on your perception, though? Oh, it was 26, yeah. 26, okay. So, 26 perception. Uh, you see the trail of blood. You also see a figure in the far distance that has not noticed you yet, but looks awfully familiar as a creature that you had faced three weeks ago. Uh, has not noticed you yet. Um, yeah, Milo is going to uh, <laughs> see see that creature and uh, and just sit and with the uh, with the most oh shit in his heart, um, try and sprint stealthily. Where? I don't know how that works. Uh, to toward towards the uh, following the trail of blood. Following the trail of blood, you got it. Cool. Like away from um, that creature, following the trail of blood. You got it. Uh, cool. Uh, as you are moving forward, and it is uh, it is not being quiet. Um, you actually notice that it is uh, the like when we're talking about the idea of like uh, trails of blood and things like that. It looks like it is wreaking havoc on the town right now, and that's why it's not mm -hmm. seeing you. Um, uh, so, uh, but uh, with that, you uh, move forward and we'll say, uh, what did I say? How long it was going to take for you to get to Saren now? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Nine minutes? Yeah. So yeah. within nine minutes, uh, you see, um, uh, I had rolled for this. Uh, yeah, you see Saren alone on the ground. So now go ahead and uh, go from there. Yeah. Just... Yeah. So Milo's going to see Saren in a. Um... Is Saren still like translucent? Like yeah, still ghostly? Very. Yeah, I would say um, it's worse now. Yeah. So Milo's gonna see a uh, a ghostly Saren um lying in a pool of blood. And uh and yeah, fall to his fall to his knees and and uh <laughs> try to try to pick her up but his arms phase through her. Um, as he, uh, the only, yeah, the only reason he's over here is because he has a potion in his, in his bag. Um, so he's going, he's going to pull out that, uh, potion of greater healing and, and, uh, pour it down Saren's, pour it into Saren's mouth. Okay. You got it. Um, as you do so, Saren, give me a, uh, give me a constitution saving throw. 30, 20. Okay. With a dirty 20. Uh, Kayla, are you okay? Yeah. 
Okay. Are you sure? You seem... Okay. Um, so with a dirty 20, uh, Saren, as you open your eyes, uh, you see uh, uh, you see Milo uh, like kind of like looking down at you, like holding you, and you, or actually not even holding you, uh, weeping uh, along a street. Um, I think uh, the memories kind of start to kind of like flood back to you um, of what has recently happened. And you surmise and assume that the creature is still around. Um, Can she tell that uh, Milo just gave her a potion? Yes. The first thing she does is look up at him and say, at least that one didn't kill me. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last time someone yeah. did that to her, she died um, mm -hmm. and got herself into yeah, this situation. I didn't, get, I didn't get this one from Zaras. Good. Uh Saren, uh, say on top of that, give me a medicine check as you say those words as long as this, at least this didn't kill me. You immediately die. <laughs> Probably. No. 15. 15. You've Her been bleeding out for a long time. You've been bleeding out for a long time. Saren, as you come to, uh, 15 is enough to recognize that as you I imagine you kind of like try to like kind of pick yourself back up. Uh, Saren, you can't feel your arm. Mm. Uh, Gerard? Yeah, I was going to say, did Gerard see Milo running past? <laughs> the blood. That's a good question. Um, the, the blur that had to stop for a second for like full six seconds and then figure out where he's at. Um, yeah, roll me a, uh, we'll say roll me a, roll me a perception check for Gerard, I think. Um, oh shoot, I did not have Gerard's stuff pulled up. Uh... Wasn't that last time Milo and Saren who were facing off against that creature alone? <laughs> a nat, a nat 20 for Gerard, <laughs> cool. because of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, Gerard. That's Gerard a 25. Just, just full on like pissed off that like he's like roaming the streets alone. Uh, yeah, I think there's like a moment where we have left a, him at the bitches brew. Yeah. We, he's having we a have, moment. Like, oh, we have like a whole moment of like, mm -hmm. I could kill anything on this street. Um, and you guys are just <laughs> leaving me alone. Uh, and you he see could, Milo. He's going to need kinda, to. Yeah. You That's see cool. Milo kind of like, uh, 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 Gerard sees Milo kind of like dart by and. Uh, comes up and so yeah you see uh, Gerard is uh, is next to you uh, highly distraught like trying to kind of like I think like truly like lapping up the blood to try to kind of figure out where that wound is coming in but it's it's a lot it's even sadder because you don't remember your relationship with him uh, Milo you like I no medicine check required you get the idea that if Saren wasn't um I think, uh, I, no, you know what? Go ahead and roll me that medicine check, uh, Milo. Can Milo use his tailor skills to uh, no. uh, also up the uh, Sutures. No, this is, to, this is to determine something. I mean, you could possibly do that later, but. It was a 14. Uh, sorry, say it one more time. My headphones cut out. 1-4. Four. 14. 14, cool. Uh, with a 14, you're pretty sure that whatever has kept Saren from uh, uh, what has kept Saren from fully dying with the amount of blood that you see around her um, is the same reason why you can't seem to pick her up. Mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Gerard is just doing his thing, trying to kind of like find the wound, but it's not... Uh, now I roll a 13 on my D100. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, 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 Saren, how are you, how are you feeling? What's, um, what, how do I get you back to normal? Um, well, I tried to take a soul, obviously not going well. One of those fucking emo lizard things. It's, and she points in the direction I'm rolling, hey. gang. What are you doing? I'm not. I'm not confident. I'm not confident <laughs> that thing has a soul, or that I can take it for you. Um, it does. It does. It's not here. turned yet. It's coming. We get. We just should we go? I can't feel my arm. 
just she, go inside the up? temple. Should we go inside the temple? Yeah, yeah, let's go. And she, like, stumbles in, holding on to Gerard. Cool, you got it. Uh, the rest of you, uh, uh, what are the rest of you guys doing? Are you I mean, just like, trying to follow along as, as quick as you yeah. can? Yeah. You got it. Just cool. two abominations walking into a church. I think at some point I I give <laughs> Wilbur to Guar because I'm struggling with the running. <laughs> oh, is that a fat joke? <laughs> no, it's that it's that I'm four nine and you're like two nine or two eight, and it's, it's a lot. Okay, uh, so we'll say uh, with this we say I've been we play rolling past like. The baby dog shit on perception checks of you guys um uh so far you guys get to that same sort of uh that same sort of area um uh I'll say like a group uh survival check just one of you needs to beat a 15. he's got good survival i have plus four you can all roll i have plus it's eight one of you have to get a vote 14. is it your ranger um i have a, a dirty 20. nice uh, 23. Well, that works better I was going to say, is it a survival check to find the temple? Yeah. Shouldn't Guar, like, yeah, be shouldn't really Gwar good know? at that? Shouldn't I, like, know? He's been there. Yeah. Pray Although harder. I, I get it because there's places that Lorianne has uh, been to. Could not get there now. Uh, Gu- uh, Guar, what did you What did you get? What did I? Oh, on my survival? Uh, yeah. I got a 12. <laughs> You should feel ashamed by that. Um, well, <laughs> character. Well, I mean. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to lay into oh, the, yeah. the clerics of the Temple of Bahamut. Oh. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, so, yeah. So, with a. Uh, uh, paladins more than clerics? Uh, you're able to be uh, aware of which direction to go. Um, so, now yeah. I'll say, everybody, go ahead and roll me perception checks. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. Nineteen. 19. I'm gonna roll a uh, luck roll at this point. It's been a long time. Okay. Cool. Uh, for everybody who rolled above a fifteen in this, uh, you see that uh, like trying to now at this point trying to kind of like follow a trail of blood would be difficult as you are looking at a horrific scene in front of you. Um, uh, you are right at that corner of where the, um, of where that, uh, uh, like broken down, uh, uh, house was. Um, you can see that there are bodies, uh, uh, tra- uh, bodies that are down and definitely dead. We'll put it that way. Um, that are, uh, about maybe like 40 feet off to you. Um, but you know uh, it is away from where the temple is. Um, you do not see the creature at this point. So we don't, I mean, we don't know what's going on, so, right? You just see that there is death and destruction in one area, and you see, it, I mean, I think you still see a trail of blood um, going the other way, but it is it is going the opposite, uh, not the opposite way, excuse me, like, uh, uh, perpendicular i want to grab one of the bodies because if it has a soul maybe damn god you're a paladin sir are you still Uh are you crazy put me down like a dragon you also i'm just saying you also don't know that she's ethereal right now this is all like, yeah, you don't. You're that. you're you're someone that believes in justice and well, like I, I all mean, the. I don't. Yeah, Warren knew you were dying. phasing in and out, but he doesn't know that like Milo couldn't carry you and that kind of stuff. So would you really? Oh, get okay. A body? Then, no, I guess I wouldn't. I didn't. I didn't know if I remembered seeing her because I thought I saw her not looking great. You did. You did. Yeah. I'm just saying that in the time that she's been gone, would Guar think, oh, she is still like that and Milo couldn't pick her up and all that? Yeah, like... probably not. I guess you're right. I I I'll put it this way. As a D- dead, as a, it's not going to matter. A, as yeah. a DM, I'm looking at the idea of your character and the design around your character and, and questioning how Guar would be okay with taking a body away from its home uh, to just to be able um, to possibly... Uh, 
Uh, I guess the way I was thinking was that if the body is, like, the person's already dead, if the person was dying, I would want to save them. But if they're already dead, then... Mm -hmm. Then their loved I, ones don't it's, matter. It's called character I, um, development. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, that's fine. I if you want a character man. development, I just think I think there's a certain class thing that we would have to start talking about. Now, is is there anyone the still breathing? What is Gwar's intelligence? Does Eldrin see anyone high. breathing? Uh, roll me a medicine check. Because she does, she's going to stay behind because she can spare the dying. Um, medicine would be... Uh, nine, 10, 11, 21. 21. Cool. Uh, yeah, with a 21, I will say this. Uh, with a 21 in your immediate vicinity, no, you do not see anyone who seems to be alive. Um, okay. uh, if you want to split up to be able to like, further inspect, or if you want to further inspect uh, going down that street instead of the other street, you certainly could. No. Um, if there's no one in the immediate vicinity, Eldrin's not going to rush into something she doesn't know. Good triage, good on. triage. And yeah. also the fact that, you know, there are guards here. They should be doing stuff too, so. Um, no, yeah, Elder. I mean, Eldrin and Wilbur both rolled. They know where they're going for to mm -hmm. find the temple, so I'm going to head that way. Yeah. Um, I'll keep right. going. No body. Sorry. I understand. I understand what you're trying to do. On top of that, also, if they're dead, it's a good chance their soul's gone. Yeah, it's gone to wherever it's yeah. wanting to go. Um, Maybe not yet. I don't know. I, don't know how I, I could see more what, because I, was I found a, this body. I'm still reeling from that choice, but uh, 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 <laughs> I, found this body. I, I, I almost, I almost made a worse choice, Mike. It's fine. <laughs> it flashed into my mind that Milo's first reaction would be to grab a random citizen. And be like, kill for it! Saren. Yeah. Oh my god! Kill it! <laughs> Saren, what have you done to this group? <laughs> See, at least the bipartisan. After was all I dead, did so. last session to try to. You, like, all, you all went make from D&D &D &D to hard Baldur's Gate. Yeah, um, so I will say, to be Elder would be like, Saren, I told you, I'm not going to ask questions about this thing. I don't completely understand as a cleric, but if you're getting our party members to kill people, we, for we've, <laughs> we've been off, be fair, we've been off for one week, and you guys have <laughs> lost your minds. Um, to be, to be fair, for Milo, that's been slightly under the surface. It has since game one, since night it one. Has. This is it worse. Has. Though we were on a break, though, like they were already dead. So. Oh my gosh. That's... Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Saren, we're running, we're Saren's running. bleeding out, just thinking, "I gotta go get my fucking rope back." God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I have a note. I have a note. I have a note. I have a note. Uh, Saren writes herself little inventory notes anytime she like takes something out of a pack, so she, that she doesn't forget. She knows where it is. I owe me. <laughs> I owe me. This is where it's located. Don't I just, I, I, all right, last thing on this. I just feel like, like, man, if Huxley heard that Guar or Milo grabbed a dead body or a live body for Saren to be able to, oh, okay, you think I'm messed up. You think I'm bad. <laughs> um, he tried to kill a child. Hey, I was going to say, he tried He to did not try to kill a child. Well, well we're, 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 we're moving way off. We were um, on a break. Got it, got that it. That sweet, yep. sweet boy who now wears <laughs> little ropes around his, um, his forehead because Eldrin taught him how to wear a diadem. Uh, just cool. for possible future purposes, can we retcon the fact that I said the rope of climbing and just say I use my normal rope? <laughs> nope. Okay. That's D and D, man. We can go back. You use don't the worry. things you have. Um, I, no, I have. I have a normal rope. I don't know why I said. But you. The rope. But you did. Yeah, you used okay. the that right. So that's. Cool. Um, so uh, cool. So as you guys, uh, so as you guys start to kind of like run down the street going forward, we're gonna kind of cut to uh, Milo and Saren. Um, uh, very quick intro of, uh, or sorry, a very quick moment of Milo um, as you push open the doors and you're, you know, you're trying to kind of help Saren where you can. But again, it is something that I think you're, you're, you're almost kind of like moving through her um, mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm there for you in spirit. And then he tries to like elbow <laughs> you in the side, but you don't have a side anymore, so. It work. Um, as you, uh, Milo, you do help in being able to like kind of push the door open instead of having Saren have to face through it. Um, you hold the door open for. Uh, 
as you guys walk in, you see a uh, you see a very uh, heavily broken apart and dilapidated uh, church with no one inside. And with that, we're going to take our 10 minute break. We'll see you guys in 10.
We are back. Uh, Saren and Milo, as you step through, you see what looks to be a ruined remains of a church. The pews themselves broken, shattered, missing. You notice that there are there are marks made along the walls, many of which in common one having a looks to be like a a large it's just two words written out on the back part of the back of the church behind uh, where the pulpit should be standing just says no justice on it as you push open the door the door is not locked make your way in you notice that there are enough cracks in the ceiling uh, of this place to feel like you are almost still in open air. What the hell happened here? Weren't we, weren't we just here? Yeah, it looks um, a bit different. Does this, uh, Joe, does this look like like weathered damage or is this like, does this seem fresh? This seems like is there moss uh, and stuff or um I would say like you notice yeah some some things of like a like a I'll say give me a uh, give me a nature check nature 16 16 doesn't look like there's been enough enough time for vegetation to seep in through the walls past maybe a week Uh, mechanically, do we handle where Saren's hit points are at now? We haven't. I don't know. At least not out loud. Uh, you roll it. Ha- uh, it's a, uh, nope, the person that administered it rolls it. Okay. Oh, is that right? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, yep, I have no idea good. what to roll, if so. Uh, was it a potion of greater healing? Yeah, 4d4 plus 4. Okay, you got it. And the d4 is the pointy one. Uh, 4, 1, 4, that's a 9 plus 2, 11 plus 4 is uh, 15, 16. 11 15. plus 4? 15. Yeah. Uh, 15 or 16? 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Okay. Uh, Saren, with the constitution saving throw that you made before, you still feel like you're able to interact with physical objects, um, even with people with like Milo. And like, there's a, there's a thing with like with Milo interacting with you. I think it was probably maybe more of like an idea of like, it wasn't clear, like, if I, I think, like, as Milo was trying to kind of, like, pick you up, uh, there was, like, moments where, like, where your body would be, uh, like, uh, Milo was able to kind of move in closer, and I think, Milo, there's a possibility that you're, like, I'm worried that I, my hand would stop inside her body. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Or it's like a, like a, um, like a branch you find in the woods that's like a little softer than you expect it to be 
mm-hmm. you pick it up yeah. and like you stop picking it up because you don't want to break anything. Right. Yeah. 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 So they. Uh, but Saren, you're able to walk in, uh, leaning against the uh, what is left of the uh, of the benches, the pews, and you take a look at your arm, and you see it just dangling beside you. Still not moving. Um, Milo's going. Uh, Milo's going to. Uh, not the cloak, not not his cloak, but a uh, but a piece of his shirt. Um, tear tear a strip of his shirt off, and uh, so now he's got like a crop top situation. Um, and uh, and make a sling for Saren to hold her arm in. Okay. Smile looks like Gambit in the crop top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little shorter. He's uh, going for Johnny Depp in uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, but <laughs> he is Cajun. <laughs> Try this, Shaya. Uh, we'll say after uh, say about a couple more minutes go by, and you see the rest of the mongoose crew, uh, including Propelda, uh, uh, oh, come through. Propelda came. Mm-hmm. Milo's going to say that out loud. <laughs> okay. So we see Saren. Mm-hmm. So Eldrin will immediately go over to Saren and say, what happened? What's... And pick up her arm that I notice is dangling. Um, I think Eldrin, and... like a notable thing, like up front is that Saren looks stranger than you've ever seen her. Yeah. Um, you see like you can actually uh in certain like ways i'd say like with like saren's face being like uh a lighter complexion you can actually see the writing behind uh her head on the wall uh, on the back part of the wall elder notices that and she says i'm not gonna comment on your current state but but then but she's gonna um can she do a medicine check on her arm because Milo put it in a sling. Uh, yeah. Go for it. And while she's doing that, uh, Saren will just explain, like, I found this guy that went into this sketchy-looking house, and he had one of those fucking chimera things on the, the table, and it obviously attacked me. And I was able to get here, but I don't I don't know where it went now. I think and we it's... can assume it went where the destruction is. Yeah. I got a twenty seven. Twenty seven. Um with a twenty seven Eldrin, I don't think you've seen anything like this from a living body. Um, the 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 tear that has gone through on Saren's arm, it's more than just uh, it's more than just bleeding. Um, there's significant amount of uh, damage to the tendons and uh, and where the bone is connecting. Uh, with a twenty seven. There's a certain point, and we've kind of discussed this above board before with other uh, uh, with other campaigns, that you know magic has this kind of like un- uh, understanding of like this like almost like all healing factor. Um, Eldrin, you know the twenty seven. This is above your level of understanding of whether or not it can come back. But if you had to guess, it'd be no. So I don't think even like a greater restoration would do anything. Um, I'd say any spell that like literally says like it would bring back limbs would work. Okay. Um. Eldrin says with a completely straight face. 
I don't think at this moment I can do anything for your arm unless you're willing to let me kill you and then resurrect you because then your arm would be whole again. But I don't think that's what you want me to do right now. You've got to be fucking kidding me. No. Yeah, that... No. I would have been very surprised if you said yes, but I would have respected your wishes. Thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> we'll figure this out, though. It's, it's it's just... I haven't really seen anything like this before. We are in the Temple of Bahamut, correct? <laughs> I am uh, praying. Yes, but not as you remember it. <laughs> no, but I am praying. She's glancing over at Guar, just thinking, you know, I'd ask him, but I mean, <laughs> judging by the looks of your god's temple, doesn't look like he's going to do anything right now. You don't know that? Uh, She's not saying that out loud. I know. I, I'm the, neither <laughs> is Guar. Because uh, I was going to say, the only thing that I can do is like my lay on hands, if I can spend five hit points to either, or healing points to cure a disease or neutralize a poison effect in the creature but I don't mm -hmm. think that would do anything in this case. Um, so I would be praying for something that I'd like Bahamut to guide me in or, or, or to guide Eldrin into figuring out what we yeah. could do if there's anything at all. So Eldrin continues in her wonderful bedside manner and says, the good news is, is that if you do die in one of these battles, I can bring you back and your arm will be fine. Right now though, it's kind of useless. But there's a silver lining. And I want you to think about that. I just wanted to say above board, uh, is there a specific spell you're referencing? Resurrection. Okay. I hope that gives you some you're... comfort. No, not not <laughs> really at all. Um and like I mentioned, there's some the horrible creature terrorizing the streets that I think we're gonna have to deal with now. Where is it? It went that way. Milo's gonna point the last place he saw it. <laughs> I'm not going out there. No. I mean, yeah. I I heard it a, a couple of times. Did it, was it... I mean, this is worse than when we fought those other ones. Was it, it full strength? It... It wasn't even turned yet, so I I hope not. I look at Brimhilda and I say, are you with me? To take care of it? Yes. Yeah, let's go. And let's you see go. Immediately right. you start to walk on. Fuck yeah! I... I know I'm really hurt, but I... To... Stop being this i i need its soul it stay sounds back. terrible to say but you come with us but stay back don't engage in the fight can, can do you your run or do rogue you wanna, things do you want to like do you need a piggyback ride what um <laughs> when he says you know, I go, just hop oh, just hop on we'll uh Milo, we'll get be insensitive she can't use her arm you don't do think we... this thing's going to come right for her do we not yeah, do we not know what's gonna what's gonna happen if you don't get us all? Uh, I didn't read the contract, so I don't really know. Do we well, don't that have was your first time? mistake. Hey, hey Oren, you what's didn't gonna either. If she doesn't Wilbur. get a soul. Yeah, you don't know. No. Why would Oren know? He worked uh, for the other side. He has a similar deal <laughs> with somebody else. Oh. It's not a similar I mean, deal. Um, okay. I mean, I guess being invisible wouldn't be that bad, but it's more the problem of completely disappearing from the plane of existence is, is more what I'm worried about. Okay. Yeah. So and We don't have time soul. to waste. Let's go. Yeah. Um, my, my worry here is actually including bringing the prey that it originally was after in the first place. Well, it's a good Luckily, way to get it to come to us without to it, hurting anybody then... else. I mean, yeah, it's already killed a lot of people. Um, so 
do so. we keep Saren here and safe and then wound it and then bring it here and do the final blow? I... Saren, how close do you have to be? What, like 30 feet? Is there a technical thing for that? Can't we find someone who's on their deathbed anyway? You know, some sort of hospice thing and we can keep you safe. You can help that soul pass on. I mean, do you have to be in the middle of action? No. Let's go to- okay, at, let's- alright. Let's take care of this. You rest. Wilbur can stay with you because he says he's not coming. Um, and- um. And and then we can go to a hospital or something after. Do they have mm-hmm. hospitals in Colville? I mean, they- A healing tent? She I looks at know. Broomhilda. Yeah, Broomhilda goes, <laughs> not- not good ones. Well, that's even, even better. better than... <laughs> okay, well, so, I mean... Jinx. I'd rather I'm thinking pick... of a more peaceful thing. Like, you're not, like, just killing someone. You're, you know, someone who's going to pass on inevitably, no matter what. They're not going to be able to be brought back if they die of old age anyway. I, yeah, I'd prefer not to... Well, I refuse to kill anybody that... Uh, yeah. Is not evil or you know already well, speaking of evil things to kill let's go yeah are are you okay staying here sarah i guess um, as long as it it's doesn't up to you. F- find me before you find it wilbur do you want to come with us or stay with saren someone should be staying with saren yeah that's how this whole thing got started i'll stay with her Above board, should anybody heal me at all? Or does anyone have? Um, yeah, I. Let's I totally can. I mean, I, I don't need spell slot. Um, I put a hand on uh, Saren's wounded shoulder. I know this won't bring your arm back to life, but it's it's the best I can do. And I I uh, heal her for fifteen more points. Count. Uh, somebody, cool. somebody, give Saren yeah. a bracelet. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Um, I, um, I give, yeah, I give Saren my bracelet, or I give it to Wilbur. Saren's kind of ethereal <laughs> right now. She and, I, mumbles, and I, yeah. she mumbles to herself, "If Hagen wouldn't have took, wouldn't have taken the damn ring back, <laughs> and be in the situation." Yeah. So yeah, I hand it to Wilbur and I say anything you let us know immediately. Got it. All right, okay. let's hunt a beastie. Stay here. You see her. No problem. I will bring its head to you. Well, preferably still its whole body is still alive a little bit. Non lethal. Or else this isn't going to work. Back. As we're walking out, I take my bag of marbles, and I I put marbles all over where the front is, so that if anyone tries to come in, they're gonna fall first. Amazing. Okay. Do you let the people inside know in case they? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I say I tell I tell Sarah and Wilbur. I say I'm gonna I'm gonna set up a booby trap. Okay. So be careful when you leave. Cool. I will say there are massive holes in these walls. Elder's doing the best she can with what she has, okay? <laughs> you got it. Yep, you got it. But as I said, like, it's it's almost like you're you're really not indoors. It's that bad. Um, mm-hmm. Which makes sense, really... because Eldrin would still exclusively use the door. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's <laughs> yeah, the civil church. thing to do. Yeah. yeah, And it's a church. She would never um, think to use a hole in a How wall. far are we from the bitch's brew? Uh, about uh, 10 minutes from Milo's running. Or no, that was the branches. branches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was the branches. Uh, I would say about... Like, running would be different. We'll assume that, like, basic movement, uh, I would say probably about maybe 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nora still has a greater healing potion. Should I give that to Saren? Or like, okay. Um, 
Or actually, let me just do a... Saren, you're at, what, 30 now? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I don't want to waste all our potions. Okay, like yeah. Let, let's, uh, yeah. You're, I think you're good enough as long as you don't get into a fight. Yeah, try, um, so. try, and, try and rest while we're, while we're mm-hmm. out. I, we, we may not take that long, but... Yeah. Well, but you're in charge. Make sure she rests. Uh, I would say make sure she doesn't move for that arm, but she can't. So just, you know, keep her comfortable. And if anyone crosses you... Show them who you are. Well, not literally, but, like, power-wise. Um, you guys get out onto the, uh, into the street um, and start walking towards that direction. I'd say, like, briskly. Um, and as you're doing so, Broomhilda kind of looks around at all of you and goes, There's no way we're carrying this thing through the street. No. Okay, good. Um, continues moving forward. Um... Uh, uh, we'll say group survival check. Another 18. 19, 12. Six. Six. Oh, yeah, it's only you three. Okay. Um, it takes you a full hour as this thing has moves very quick and has uh, torn through the town uh, going from uh, I'd say you know, to kind of give a, a sort of concept here I would say has probably uh, Walking through the street, uh, seeing the bodies now being tended to by loved ones who are now in various forms of mourning, um, uh, you uh, continue on and see much about the same for about half hour. There's a significant amount of uh, bodies, I would say, you know, counting as you go along, as I imagine someone like Broomhilda would. Uh, it's about 20. Uh, I'm going to roll something here. While we're walking, Eldrin is seeing if any of them are um, still breathing or hanging on to life or anything like that. Yeah, okay, cool. Give me cast Spare the Dying if they are. Actually, we'll, we'll say, uh, we'll carry that 21. Um, we'll say of that 20, um, uh, of that 20, the 21 you had originally for your medicine check. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, roll me a d20. Okay. And then minus five from that number. 11. 11. So over half, uh, you see are still, you know, suffering from heavy, heavy wounds, things that very much like Saren, they're most likely missing limbs, uh, but they'll survive. Yeah, um, and I know it'll slow us down, but Aldrin's going to cast Spare the Dying on everyone she sees that she can. You got. Um, cool. Till eventually you uh, you hear the screams go from sadness to fear. And uh, after moving past essentially like a whole block, um, you see there is a uh, massive hole in the side of a large house. Um, as you see, something is uh, something with bright green eyes. Uh, it's hard to tell from the body, but looks to have uh, looks to have grown in size. Um, is feeding on something. Uh, I will roll something on that. Does not seem to see any of you. Is there anyone around them alive? Um, roll me perception checks. Um, that would be twenty-four. Wait, twenty-five. Okay. 
uh, uh, anyone else who wants to roll can. Sorry, I was looking at my spells. What are we rolling? Perception. Perception. Uh, this is 23 for me. 23? 24. 24? Cool. Uh, with all of you, you all see this uh, at the exact same time uh, as a, uh, a small boy uh, seems to be trapped under a table on the uh, second floor of this uh, now looking like when this thing barged in uh, the uh, the wall in the like stucco sort of uh, part of that second thing is, is like like broken over um, and you see this boy is like huddled underneath a table on that second floor but can be clearly seen from outside of the house um, I'll say uh, if you if you guys would like to go ahead and roll initiative But you also have a surprise round on it as well. So, um, with that surprise round, Milo's gonna um, uh, walk up the walk up the wall to get to that uh, second well, floor. Well, if we're rolling initiative, we're rolling initiative. So we need. Oh. I assume. I see. I see. I assume people are rolling, right? Yeah, yeah, but do we still get our surprise round? Yeah, but we would do that in initiative. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, then yeah. There you go. Um, but like I, I you could guys can kind of like talk to each other like like prepping of like I'll go this way you mm-hmm. go this way and and go through that that's totally yeah. fine it's just we want to make sure we get those numbers first yeah okay. I got a five five eleven eleven um twelve for Noro seventeen for Eldrin okay uh, and Bermilda got crazy low she'll be last um, for what it for what it counts Milo got a nat one for. Yeah, well, I mean, well, NPCs make sense. It ma- makes sense for Broomhill to go after you, anyways, so. though. No. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you guys can kind of talk to each other on how you're working this out, um, or you can just go. I think it makes um, sense, Milo, for you to go rescue mm-hmm. the kid. Yeah. I will just attack the shit out of it. Yeah. Um, if you want to, I mean. Eldrin would take her surprise round to, like, make a perimeter to make sure there's no one else besides that kid within, like, 30 feet of yeah. what's happening. Okay. So if we're doing spells and stuff like that, it's... Yeah. So Eldrin's, like, telling people to get back if there's people around, or... I, I don't know. Quietly. Sure. Cool. Uh, I would be casting... Using my turn to cast haste. Uh, we'll say, uh, I mean, as a surprise round on that, just so that you don't have to waste your spell on that, we'll say that uh, Brumhilda will cast haste on you. Sick. Okay. Um, and Norris is helping Eldrin. They're probably just, like, together making a perimeter. I, I will say haste. Uh, oh, for the extra attack. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And the plus two to the AC. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And advantage of dex saving throws. So. Um, it's a lot of stuff in haste. It's awesome. Uh, sweet. So yeah. Um. So yeah. So we'll say Eldrin. Uh, no problem. Success on like getting people to kind of like move back. You do notice that there are people like kind of like like kind of coming out of their houses, like trying mm-hmm. to see if it's safe. I think someone like you, like dressed in full armor or or you know with weaponry Ropes. and all that stuff, being like yeah, yeah being like no, get back. Um, mm-hmm. you definitely have a you have a look about you that looks definitely more official. Um, uh, and I'd say uh, no role required. Everybody moves back. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. And then, uh, so Milo, you're you're trying to procure the uh, the kid during mm-hmm. this whole thing, right? Yeah. So I'll say, I mean, if you want to, you know, we rolled initiative on this, and we'll kind of keep to that when uh, like outside of surprise round. But if you or if you wanted to hold your turn to do that, that's totally fine. To hold it to uh, get haste cast on me, or just to no hold to it. have Milo. Like, yeah. unless you want to go and attack, like the thing is, you I'll go and attack, attack this thing. N- no right. idea the destruction is going to do. And I like, will hold my attack until the the boy's safe. Cool, yeah. you got it. Uh, so Milo, um, yeah. uh, I would say you know, giving a general sort of pers- uh, perspective, like looking around, um, you notice that there is uh, definitely some play, like plenty of places for you to like 
uh, hop up on um, to be able to kind of uh, make your way to the like second floor window. Um, so I'll say, uh, just give me an acrobatic check, DC 10. Actually, it would be like a DC uh, 15. It would be 15. But I can just walk up, like walk up the wall and... Oh, you can walk up walls. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah, you straight up walk up the wall and, and get to that second that second window, no problem. Um, uh, I'll say that it takes half your movement getting up there. Um, okay. You see the, the kid just terrifying under the desk. You can um, notice there's a... a uh, there's like a little uh, you can see there's a tail uh, that he uh, has that is like kind of like curled up uh, behind him um, I'm assuming the the uh, chimera downstairs feeding is sloppy and making a little bit of noise but Milo's gonna like shh where? Um, and uh, kind of sneak over to the kid and uh, and and grab him and start start our way uh, he's gonna go out the same way he came in. You got it. Uh, I will say uh, because we're doing that in in this way, I would say give me uh, give me a stealth roll. Mm -hmm. I'll say uh, instead of having you um, instead of having me also roll for the kid, I'll say it's just with disadvantage because of the kid. Okay. No problem. Uh, kid just kind of like just like climbs on your back. As you get closer, you see these like these like kind of like little nubs of what look to be the beginning of horns on his head. Um, as you surmise, he's just a young tiefling kid. Can we adopt him? <laughs> um, Depending on who the chimera is feeding on, maybe. Oh, he yeah. is so terrified uh, that he's not even saying anything. He's just okay. he's just following the adult. Mm-hmm. Uh, climb yeah, on your Milo, back. yeah, Milo's gonna um, then climb out the window and walk down towards the street. Cool. Uh, so the only thing would be to say to, to be able to have that all of that happen on your turn, you'd have to spend like a key point to uh, bonus action dash. Cool, you got it. So you do that. Uh, no problem. Um, and then he brings that body to know. Saren. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, uh, in and out. Um, cool. Uh, with that, Eldrin, you and he's gonna have... um, he's gonna place the boy like outside of Eldrin's uh, perimeter, like mm -hmm. safely in a corner. You got it. Uh, give me a give me a persuasion check. Oh no, that's booty. Uh, five. Cool. Um. So you uh, place the kid there. Um, he's like, at, like he's about like six or seven, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you, you know, tell him, wait here, don't move, whatever. Uh, you see him kind of like nod his head. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, so that is Milo's turn. Eldrin's turn. Uh, if you would like, I'll say I'll say in this because Guar, yeah, I think Guar, you, it was Guar, Eldrin, and Milo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, so so adhering to the mechanics of it, yeah, I would say Guar, you'd have to wait until that. So Eldrin, technically, you could go before, but we'll say that you're also holding your turn. This is semantics that we don't need to necessarily worry about at this point. So Eldrin, okay. is your turn. Um, Eldrin um strikes the ground with her um bident and um, casts Destructive Wave on the um, Chimera. Um, so the Chimera needs to do a Constitution 17 saving throw, and then we'll take 5d6 Thunder damage as well as 5d6 Radiant damage, or Good half Lord. of that. And if it okay. works, they're knocked prone. And I would say they have disadvantage because they're surprised by this. Um... Uh, this thing has a significant amount of constitution, but roll a 13. Okay. So let me just do um, for thunder damage, I can do da, 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 da. where are you channel divinity? 
All right, so for thunder damage, I'm just going to use my channel divinity so it takes the full damage. So that's 30 thunder damage, and then I'll roll the radiant damage. Okay. I rolled a lot of sixes, that's nice. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So. So that's 49 damage and it's knocked prone. Cool. You got it. Um, uh, what does this look like coming out of your staff? Um, so it's it's divine energy and it ripples out of me. So I think from the staff, like it, I, I use that as like um, a focus. So it like ripples along the, um, the prongs and then just shoots out at... Um, the beast. Okay, you got it. Uh, cool. So as it does, so I would assume like if it is a wave, it's going to also like crash and like break everything in there. As nope. far as like, I choose each creature you choose within thirty feet. Okay. I do think you would get some of the furniture in that. No. I mean, it says I. I it says you strike the ground and blah kind. blah blah. Each creature you choose within 30 feet of you must succeed a constitution saving throw. Um, I mean, because other spells say, like, if they're not wearing stuff and this and that, like, it'll get damaged. It just doesn't specifically call that out. It says that it, it's a choice. You know what I mean? Like, but if you want to for flavor, that's fine. I was just, I, I'm looking at it in terms of, like, the reality of, like, something mm-hmm. like that with the, um, uh, could you choose within 30 feet? Must, you know, yeah. Within thirty feet of you, as well as thirty six feet. Yeah, so I think there's there's a moment of like just like a like it's you're not leveling the the mm-hmm. but like there's like uh, like tables, chairs, everything kind of just gets smashed up against the wall. Um, I think there's probably like a hole that like a small hole that even the uh, the chimera couldn't fit through on the other side. Um, uh, so yeah, there's like general damage, um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so cool. what happens when something's knocked prone? Uh, what do you mean? Mechanically? Yeah, mechanically. Like, if Norris uh, is going to attack next, does he get anything for that? Or? Yeah, it's uh, you would have advantage on melee attacks. Okay. So, um, remembering how nasty these things are, too. So, Norris is going to um, attack with his Bident. Um, and he's going to probably do that twice. But, um, hold on. Because I can do... Okay, yeah. So he's going to um, attack twice with the Biden. You got it. Uh, the first one is a 19 plus 10, so 29, I'm hoping, hits. It'll hit. Yep, <laughs> okay. and all that other one. And then the other one. Um, does a 22 hit? 22 does hit. Okay, so he does... 2d6 plus 12. Uh, so he does 19 damage um, with the Bident. And then, hold on, I want to do one thing. Um, actions, where are you, Bident? 19 total? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, the Bident, where are you? I just want to see if this is a bonus action or not. Um, Okay, so he is going to use the ability where he can learn the damage vulnerabilities, resistances, immunities, and condition immunities. Um, Okay. Um... I'll say for simplicity's sake, because I mean this this surprise round, unless Guar completely misses, you get you're gonna destroy this thing. Um, mm-hmm. We'll say you get that, and I'll give that to you later. Okay, um, and then um, he's gonna use his bonus action to disengage. Cool. So he comes back it. to Eldrin. And we'll say you know as it uh, uh, Guar as it kind of like turns to face Noros and that uh, Guar, it is your turn. You come up. Uh, I just I run at it and 
like jump in the air, do one of these, like with my butt, with my halberd, like blade forward, going to like stab the thing through the fucking face. Cool. Because I forgot we have to keep it alive. Brumhilda already said like, Brumhilda made a like thing of like, there's no way we're doing that. We're not doing that. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, and we there's no way we can carry this thing. We gotta we gotta figure something else out for Siren. Right. So uh, that's a twenty six to hit. That'll hit. Cool. Uh, and then nine plus that's uh, fourteen damage, and I'm gonna smite at second level. So that's three d eight, right? Sorry, I'm gonna make sure I'm doing it. It's been a while since we fought. <laughs> uh, is it d six or d eight for the divine smite? What is it d eight? It is say it on there. It is a D8. Yeah, I was just, I was, uh, so yeah, 3D, 3D8. So six plus five, eight, nine, 10, plus four. So that's an extra 15 damage. So 14 plus 15 is 29. And I'm going to attack again. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. 21 will hit. Cool. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. That is uh, 12 damage. How uh, do you want to kill this thing? Uh, I think that in that in the middle of that, uh, I'm like midair. Uh, I, I stab this thing through. I, I would just imagine like it opens its mouth to roar. I stab it through the mouth, wrench out the halberd, and then decapitate it. You got it. And then yeah, I land you, on the ground like an anime character. Uh, as you slice it down, you see the head um, uh, 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 get uh, sliced open, but keeping like just, uh, I would say probably too like because the, the bone armor on this thing is still growing. Yeah. Um, and I would say that like you see that it's still like somewhat attached, but now just like just a full Pez dispenser. Um, at this point, um, as you see, the blood that is uh, seeping out of it uh, is now a like gooey, thick oil black. Um, but it is dead. Gross. I think by this time Milo's running, running in to start attacking. And I right, remember, guys, we need non-lethal. <laughs> God damn it! Quack! Hack that head off. Whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, I'd say I it takes we, you more than one. Oh, and I sure. say, and I look at the head and like the dripping gore and everything. I say, I think we owe the king a visit. I mean, this is at least evidence of something. Yeah. I mean, sure. not have a badge to get in, but I have a mother who is there right now. I am a princess of Honoria, so. And I am a slayer of whatever the fuck this is. You did a good job too, Noros. I've been rolling uh, for guards too. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> like, I just rolled a nat one. Um <laughs> Uh, the guards that are here, like the guards that would be here, uh, we talked about truly like years ago, uh, are called green guards. And the idea they are yeah. truly young. They're green. Yeah. The better guards are in Midtown, and the better better guards are in uh, right now, yeah. Eisenheim proper. Proper, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So even during this time, over you know, over the span of an hour or something going on, you imagine that there there must be word that has gotten to them by now. But that's it. Um, for now, yeah. that's, that's all you know. Um, um, uh, so, yeah, you? Eldrin says, well, let's go fetch our companions and then make our way to the gates. You got it. I think as you guys uh, come back to... Uh, uh, as you make your way to kind of come back, going the same route as where you came in, uh, you do see that there are a significant amount of guards that are uh, moving in that direction. Uh, you see uh, they are uh, somewhat stopping and like 
I think trying to uh, trying to like help out in like looking around at the figures that are that are now screaming at them. Where were you? Um, they take uh, statements. Uh, <laughs> I, I, they're not even taking statements. I think they're truly like. I'll say this. Uh, go ahead and like. I'm not even gonna. We'll simplify this. Uh, like insight check wise for you guys. Truly, just it's. I would say it's maybe twenty percent like. Uh, uh, twenty percent. Uh, more than anything, it's lack of experience and understanding. Uh, not even on what they're fighting, but on being able to uh, 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 guard against what's happening. I think from Hilda, as you guys easily kind of like sidestep them. I think as long as you guys are trying to like hide the head somewhat, I won't even have you roll for it. Um, as there's so much stuff for the guards yeah. to be distracted in. Um, but, uh, yeah, even with that Brumhilda, like, I think Brumhilda makes a comment as you guys, like, come on the way back here, like, Colville was never protected by these guards. Mm-hmm. There's just not enough, and there's, they're not trained well enough. Um. Well. I'm not sure how well this plan is going to work, but you all know me. I can make enough of a fuss to at least get someone to talk to us at the gate. It's worth a shot. Like I said, it's evidence of something. We don't necessarily know that this is connected to Tall, but... Well, it's connected to Elmater, which we know is connected to Tall. If only slightly. Uh, Above board, you don't know that for a fact I thought I was reading my notes today and we it thought says that something it was, like that yeah it was it was that Ilmater it and the cultists weren't exactly connected to tall but there is a loose connection there's a loose connection that's a yeah. that's the yeah loose connection being the very operative word here um there's a you guys didn't get enough information on that side but uh did as, it, so I did <laughs> read um Sylvia's like journal did it say anything about like tall tall or these these chimeras yes it did i mean it it gave some information on that didn't say anything about tall okay i'll have to go back and watch that episode yeah um Um, okay so yeah i mean we go back to saren and wilbur did i get a long or a short rest you absolutely did so you can use some hit die if you want I already did the math, just in case. Uh, Saren, as you are, uh, as you are taking your short rest, trying to kind of like do your best to kind of regain your strength, um, periodically Wilbur, uh, anytime Wilbur's actually like talking to you or saying anything, periodically you see, uh, you look at Wilbur's face and you see a skull in his place. Hey, that's fucked up. That is Wilbur, you don't know that. Question. This isn't a good question. Never mind. Death ward means that you can't die, so it's not like Saren could kill Wilbur, take a soul, his soul, but then it comes back because he has death ward on him, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. We're trying to game the system, Joe. I, I, I am. <laughs> if there's anything I'm getting this session, it is very much that. Yes, I'm hey, with you. I'm That's not taking up. Wilbur's soul. But Wilbur does still have death, um, not death touch. Um, I've been playing too much Magic the Gathering. Um, whatever ward. it is. Death, death ward, ward, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think the point here was to say that, Saren, you, uh, you are given a sign now very clearly of a possible target to end your current let's go, let's go, let's go king, yeah she's looking and it. she just she just does the like head shake thing like absolutely fucking not she's like mumbling to herself mm-hmm. are not you not gonna happen are you okay i no and she holds up her hand obviously not um i might have to go somewhere before we get out of here the... You can't. You can't go anywhere right now. We have to stay here. No. When when they get back, the the place where th- that thing came from. There's a there was a guy. That was I don't 
I don't know what his involvement was. He he did stab me a little bit, but he, obviously he wasn't very strong. I didn't kill him, but he had some involvement in this thing. And Good question. That might be the only option for me right now. If you know what I mean. Uh, no. Because what I heard was a guy stabbed you and now you want to go visit him. To stab him back? With your arm in that shape. Oh, I still have this one. Maybe you should keep mm -hmm. resting. I think you may have got a head injury. Probably. Just, just, just rest. I'm sure they'll be back soon. I hope so. An hour goes by. You don't hear anything. Hmm. Well, <sighs> I mean, you haven't gotten any weird messages in your head, right? Nope. You, can you see if if they're on their way? You, you have the bracelet, right? Um, yeah. Yep, um, <clears throat> I, yes, I can do that. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm trying not to laugh. Um, <laughs> Eldrin <laughs> This is Wilbur Are you coming back soon? Best <laughs> Best <laughs> Wilbur uh, We're on our way back We have the head of the beast And we want to use this as some sort of proof. So get ready. Everything's fine. And I turn to Guar and I say, you're a really bad influence on Wilbur. <laughs> For what? He's now uh, screaming in his messages. Saren and Wilbur both going for seven checks. 22. Also 22. Okay. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, both of you uh, here from, uh, if you remember the like sort of like back, um, there's a name for it in a church, but it's like the back part of the banister for like, essentially it's like the uh, the nosebleed section um, where yep. it's like you actually have to go up to it. Um, you, the you hear uh, maybe mezzanine. Um you hear the sound of creaking wood. Um, Wilbur, what the fuck was that? Shut up. <laughs> I, I think we should I'm, so f <laughs> I'm so fucking scared right now. Shut up. <laughs> See Wilbur slapping too. <laughs> There's a moment that I imagine this scene and like thinking about the idea of like hearing someone and then proceeding to whisper, knowing that this that whoever was here heard you talking normally. Now oh, just yeah. you whispering. Look at shut up, Joe. She's fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. Uh <laughs> is there like any like 
ruin that we can hide under? Like some overturned pew or something? Um, I think... I'll say this. With, like, Saren... Saren's been in much better shape. But Saren, your senses, for the most part, are all pretty much intact. Um... You feel like if you heard someone going up there or entering there, you would have heard it. As in, like, Ooh. whoever it is, is has been here the whole time? Yeah. I've been here the whole time. It's Sam Reich. <laughs> it's just Sam Reich pops out. <laughs> I mean, you could still, I mean, I, like, as far as, like, looking for, like, yeah, I'd say there's, like, there's rubble that you could, like, move and, like, get under, especially as Wilbur. Uh, Wilbur, like, looks like, oh, there's just so much ground here. Um, Wilbur starts borrowing. <laughs> yeah, just immediately starts borrowing. I think Gerard will instinctively, like, get in front of Saren and uh, Wilbur. I just, yeah. As Saren, like, scoots closer to Wilbur. And is like look looking at the exits, like if there's you said there's like holes in the wall and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just trying to pre-route whatever hole they need to jump out of, if it comes to that. Okay. Uh, from your vantage point, is there still uh, there's still enough like debris and uh, like kind of like the uh, the railing itself to recognize that. If any, if anyone or a thing that was small enough was hiding behind it, you wouldn't be able, you just wouldn't be able to see them. Um, but uh, we'll say, we'll say with that, um, it takes you, it takes you guys uh, a while to come back. Um, so we'll say, Saren and Wilbur, if you are trying to just basically like play it safe and just be on defense on there, that's that's totally fine. That makes sense. Um, but we'll say within that, uh, uh, we'll do. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, within that time, you don't hear or see anything else up there. Oh, good. So it's just haunted. Cool. Great. It's already one ghost too many in this building. Yeah, you're not sure if whatever is up there is scared or cool. just, bite, just biding their time. Could be just a little rat. I literally have goosebumps. But after twenty minutes, uh, you guys come back. Um, I tell everyone to be careful. <laughs> yeah, I was, gonna say. I was gonna say who slips on the marbles. <laughs> I do please, point them out. Please to let everyone, it be more. But I really do. Have I have advantage on deck saves right now, so. I no, you don't. don't. It's a long I journey don't. back. I don't. Be you are leaning on Broomhilda. Holding this head. Um, be careful of the... I just thought that this would be a good idea, you know, to... In case someone tried to come in unknown, it would make some noise. Uh, they're yep, they're that's everywhere. Good. I mean, yeah, Broomhilda, can you do that thing you did before where you, like, and they went away? She just looks down and, like, kicks them out of the way. <laughs> that works, too. It just seems like okay. such a waste. Parts them like the Red Sea. You, know, you, don't, you, you need, don't, don't need to use magic for everything, Eldrin. I don't. I I love the idea. Like, Eldrin says it's such a waste. Uh, it's from Hilda, who... I don't know if from Hilda knows or not, but she would say, like, it is infinite marbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it just feels yeah. like a waste. You, uh, you guys kind of move through the door. Um, so yeah, so we we come in and I say, um, all right, well, this isn't all the proof that he wanted, but maybe it's enough to make him listen to us. So is everyone prepared to go? I mean, maybe you should clean yourself up a little, Saren. Um, I... <laughs> Jesus. Thanks. And Milo, um, that shirt there, is not yeah, going to cut it. I'll j there's Your midriff is showing. No, I we... ripped it. I didn't cut. No, we heard something. Sorry, Saren. We oh. heard something upstairs. Um, can we leave? Yes. Like let's... now? Yes. Guar, lead the I... way to uh, Eisenheim proper. No. Before 
and like as they're going out the door um can we stop back at where that thing came from I have to finish something and fix and she looks at her just like motions to herself <clears throat> fix this what do you mean finish something oh yeah the, the dude that stabbed her she wants to go stab him back or we could use him as further evidence for the king on what's going on. Do you want to lose another arm? I mean, he had basically a butter knife. I, I don't think that's well going to happen. Why don't we go back and unless we can he somehow him. made another one of those fucking things in the can... hour that I've been gone? Well, we can go and question him and question. see if there's any relevant information that he has before you do whatever it is you need to do. But I do think that he could be used as further proof his testimony if we can get him to actually talk. Regardless, we need to go back. Okay. Let's do that then. Let's go. Good. You guys head out? Going back down the street. At this point, it is very dark out. There are more guards stationed uh, around, but I will say that they, uh, I'd say for the most part, they've kind of like made their way down, so I'd say by the time you guys kind of get back to uh, where that house is, uh, you see there are like two or three that are stationed there. Um, um, uh, they are seeing you all coming up. Um, Who's carrying me? Who's carrying the head? I'll carry the I, head. Why are you carrying the head and Wilbur? Yeah, Wilbur's on my shoulder. I can give Wilbur a piggyback ride. Okay. Is Wilbur disguised at this point? Um, yeah, I would say you were in that place for like an hour. Would you have put your disguise on? Yeah, probably so. I tried it on. <laughs> So we have a little widow walking with us. And a ghost. <laughs> what ghost. can this night get for these guys? With a beheaded with beast. Oh, what a sight. Eldred and Norris are walking ahead of everyone and she's just holding his hand. Uh, great. Uh, we'll say one of the guards uh, does come up and goes, I'm oh, sorry, Hub, you can't... Uh... Uh, are, you, are you just passing on? I would recommend not going down this street. Um, we have business in this house. In this house? Yes. It's clearly abandoned. Yes, it was abandoned after my friend here, her husband, died. And she's coming back to pay her respect. <laughs> Milo's going to put a hand on Wilbur's shoulder. <laughs> uh, Elring, roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> Do I get um, advantage because Milo put a hand on Wilbur's shoulder? Absolutely not. <laughs> All right. Causing a freaking ruckus myself. over here. Can Saren try to slip in the side? Like the ori- way she got in there originally? Uh, I'll say, uh, give me a uh, give me a stealth roll to be able to like uh, just like surmise like, oh, I see guards. I'm gone. Yeah. All right. I'm going to use my um, my inspiration. Reroll this. Okay. Oh my gosh, so much math. Guys. Um, that would be a fifteen. Okay. With a fifteen, thirty-four. Sorry. Oh, God damn it. Um, okay, I'm I'm so sorry. I, I will say there's uh, there's a lot of stuff that's happening right now. If you just uh, give us a minute, um, I'll gather some of the other cards. We'll go in with you um, as there's. There's been a lot of attacks. We want to just make sure that you're safe. We're perfectly uh, capable of keeping them. ourselves safe. Uh, it's not a question of that, miss. It's just a Char- question of that there's Charlie's, a... Charlie's looking over us. I know it. <laughs> of course, we need to be um, alone during this time. There, there. If you must stay outside, that's fine. I understand your concern, all of you, and I. this is not a question of your ability. It's our job. Uh, One that we are perfectly capable of corporal. Uh, Brumhilda, uh, just like in this moment, just goes, um, no, it's not your job. 
And you and you just see the guard go, it's not our job. Good day. Um, and just like walks <laughs> off. So she you just casts like... you were looking for. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she casts literally a plethora. Of, it could be uh, out of my memory. It could be... Um, yeah. Um, uh, she's Very way handy. too powerful to deal with a green guard. Um, oh, but I will say... My act wasn't convincing enough. Yeah, uh, Charlie yeah. is looking over us. Charlie is watching. Oh, hey, it. Charlie is watching all, over all of us. Um, Maybe that's uh, our group's motto. <laughs> Charlie is always watching. Saren, I will say, <laughs> uh, would you get in your stealth roll? Thirty-six or thirty-four. Thirty-four. I don't know. Thirty-four. That's not. Oh 30 well, thirty-four. Something. Well, you failed uh, then. Yeah, DC I failed. Was Thirty-five. Sorry. Uh, with a thirty-four. Saren's dead again. Uh, I think with the 34, you guys kind of like look around and recognize like all of a sudden, oh, Saren's not here. Um, Saren, you have about 30 seconds before anyone goes in. Did I, did I phase through the back? Mm -hmm. No problem. Is the guy still tied up? Yes, he is. Is he unconscious? (laughs) Yes, he is. You hurt this man deeply. Mm-hmm. Um, am I able to wake him up in some way? Yeah. Okay. You're a rogue. You know how to do it. Just slap him in the face. <sighs> oh. Get it over with. I I don't know what you did to that woman, but she's gone, and hopefully she's at peace now. But it's it's best not to mess with the natural order of life and death. Um, souls shouldn't be made to suffer by becoming something they're not supposed to. I understand. Do what you need to do. As as he says that, you see that same skull appear over his face. And uh, I assume the knife that he stabbed her with is probably laying like Very right there on the floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's gonna take it and finish the job. You see blood trip down. Saren, you hear footsteps of your friends coming behind you. Do you do anything to make it look like you haven't done what you've done? She says the command word for her rope and puts it, just shoves it back in her bag. Um, and she takes the knife out from where she just stabbed him, throws it over onto the table that the Camaro was on, and goes goes to the door. Uh, you all approach the doorway and see Saren already there. Where is he? We should question him. Is she solid? Or is she still looking the same? I'm going to allow Saren to decide right now. Eventually, you would. Um, I think she def- she's not fully solid again, but you can definitely see a noticeable difference as her hands in her pocket and there's a vial of ink in there that you can't see but it's there well that's one one task solved I guess we could have used him Saren we need proof the more the better he, he was just 
he's he must have just died. He he wouldn't have been of any use anyway. He's just some guy. I push past Saren, and I'm gonna go to the guy and um and um investigate to see if he has anything on him that could be useful. I don't know if Saren took the notebook, but it's a good question. It, it would. It would still be on the uh, okay. little table in the middle. Yeah, so Eldrin's looking okay. around for anything useful. She doesn't know about the and notebook, but... She she turns to Eldrin. Can't we just... Someone use speak with dead on him or whatever? It's very limited. Any what magic people? Do? I suppose. I can't do that today. And we're just carrying a dead body in, into the castle. No, we're carrying this. Uh, actually, yeah, I was gonna say yeah, Brumhilda also already has a out, head. Goes, so, to be honest with you, to speak with that, you don't have to have a full body. So <sighs> we're gonna be carrying around two heads, is what you're saying? I'm, I'm just being clear on the choice that you made. Does Saren tell us about the notebook? I think uh, Eldrin, I'd say if you look around, you could see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I I find it and I start leafing through it to see if there's anything useful. Okay. Looking through the notebook, you see there are. It's a diary. A diary of a man who was in love. It's very poetic writing. You see that in the words reading between the lines of artistic writing, it seems that there was a decision that they had both made that they wanted to get married. So they went to a church. The writing changes very quickly. It is no longer poetic. You see that there is a shift in even how it's being even the the way the pen would touch paper. And every Every note that you see after starts out with something's wrong and it's getting worse. The last notes you see are extremely hard to read. As you can tell that it must have been written in the dark. Because there was something with them, something coming. You read a tale not of choice, but of just bad luck and sorrow. Saren in this moment I think you're looking at Eldrin as Eldrin's reading what does Saren see in Eldrin I think Eldrin Um, 
keeps her composure, but as she's reading, instead of looking upset, she's getting visibly, like, I think you you see, like, her fist kind of, like, she, she, um, what's it called? Makes a fist at Mm -hmm. her side, and, like, she looks angry. And when she's done reading it, she closes it and walks up to Saren and pushes the notebook in, or the diary into her chest and says, looks her in the eye and says, he didn't deserve to die. And then I'm going to walk out. Saren, as you... Says, I love you, Kayla. <laughs> Saren, as you read these same words and recognize that in all likelihood you killed an innocent man. You hear the sound of deep scratchy laughter. Saren, you've spent most of the day having random people showing their selves as skulls. And I think for Saren, there's a moment of recognizing that the desperation of wanting to be normal, of going back to the way you know you are, lets you put trust in something you definitely shouldn't have. And you imagine in that moment as the figure that is now dead at your feet was staring up at you. He wasn't saying Saren. Possibly Venicepa himself. I think we cut from here. There's a moment where I think when we see the scene start to open up, the black fading into a tavern, as it is very late. We see people that are gathered around, drinking the dregs of whatever is left over from that day. I think I'd like to know who's here and who's not here. I'm definitely there. Uh, Aldrin is stubborn enough to want to go to the castle tonight, but I don't think she'd go without everyone. I don't know, though. Um... Where are we uh, settling down? Are we back at the Bitches Brew? Yeah, the scene, the this scene is opening up at the Bitches Brew. Yeah, yeah I think Milo, Milo would be down in the uh, down in the tavern. Saren would be too. And Gerard. Okay. Wilbur would be too. Just like holding his head in his hands. Eldrin is not. He is outside with Noros. Uh, Brumhild is here. (laughs) 
I think as this scene kind of opens up, I was kind of like looking around at you all. I can't believe I'm the one that's going to say this, but choices were made. Choices that, in some manner of speaking, how you would look at it, make sense. It's done. We move on. Saren, this is a this is a time of war. Ramilda's right. We do things in the heat of the moment that don't always looking back feel good or feel just. But you did what you could with the knowledge you had. And we learn, and we move forward. And hopefully, I don't know how any of this works for you, but hopefully you can get yourself a soul before you get all see-through again. I think looking at Saren, you see Saren, I imagine at this point, probably pretty much back to normal. Uh, arm still. Did the journal say anything about who this man, like, was his name or if he had family here? It was a personal diary. He wouldn't have any reason to write his own name in it. Yeah. What about his beloved name? That's a good question. I'll call her Margaret. Okay. Uh, and Milo's going to join in the pep talk. And Saren, I don't, don't judge you for any of it. I would have killed any one of those people on the street to make sure you were fine. I, I mean, I, I did what I had to do. I, I didn't want to risk him turning into one of those things, and... I mean, I, I, I didn't know if he was the one who caused it, or who knows who they they made a deal with somebody I don't I don't know but he was he was already he already seemed too far gone and I don't know you had to make a call you made a call there's a lot of questions we can't have an answer for so there's no reason to make them up ourselves you were led there and you made the best decision you could uh, the person at the bar uh, is not Grix. Uh, you see a, another figure, um, kind of like a tall, slender guy, kind of bent over, um, just has that kind of permanent, like he's probably maybe like 6'4", but like tries to look like he's 5'10", um, as he is uh, gathering drinks and, uh, or gathering uh, leftover glasses and whatnot. Um, I say this because you do see Grix come in <sighs> um, I've, uh, I have a question for you all. 
Um, has anybody seen my son? No, he's supposed to be here. Okay. If you see him. Wait, wh where was the last place you saw him? You see him look at you. The look that is... A mix of sadness and shame. You were right. You were... You were all right. Let me know if you see him. You see him head out into the night. As you remember a conversation that you had on wondering how he could let his son wander around alone in Colville. Mm -hmm. And in what may be one of the Mongoose crew's darker moments, we'll say. We'll end tonight's session. We'll see you guys next week.